All right, we're on the air. Good evening. This is Rusty from Stunt Hanger Control Line Forums, and this is our video hangout. We have it every uh, Monday and Friday, and hope you can join. If you're a member of the Stunt Hanger Control Line Forums, then you can go to the thread called At the Bench, which is accessible to members only, and the link to get into the video chat is posted there. It'll be the newest post. And also the uh, YouTube page, uh, the link to the YouTube watch page is posted there too. And uh, see, we've already got one viewer. That was pretty quick. Thanks for coming to see us. And um, we'll hang out here till about midnight, talk about aero modeling or uh, whatever you're doing at your workbench. Doesn't matter. You can be building a hot rod or a boat or an airplane or anything fun like that. And, that's what we're here for to talk about that kind of stuff. And um, so welcome. I hope everybody had a good weekend. The weather was pretty good. Um, it's actually cooled off a little uh, for the week. Um, a little drizzly here in my neck of the woods, which is opposite the usual trend. It's usually nice during the week and, uh, and uh, rainy and nasty on the weekend. So <laughs> that's a change up. Um, so I hope you got some flying or building or, um, general tool, uh, uh, tool shop fun going on this weekend. St. Patrick's Day. Hope you didn't get too green either. Um, I think uh, we had a big St. Patrick's party here in Columbia in the Five Points District, and uh, that's down by the University of South Carolina, where um, it's famous for getting a little bit too wild. And there's Jim. How are you doing tonight, Jim? Hey, Rusty. What's going on? That's your TV going on back there? Yeah, I'm, I'm turning it down right now. How's it going, Rusty? Good. Did you get anything uh, interesting done this weekend? Yeah, actually, I got the uh, I got my kit from Mike Pratt, uh, Primary Force. Oh, I love those. It's a nice, simple plane too. You don't have to worry about flaps and all that crap either. Just throw it together. Yeah, I I hear it. I hear it's a really good design. You got kind of a weak connection, I think. Let me let me take a look and see where mine's set. You're chop. You're not. Do I? You're not doing your Alvin thing, but you are a little, uh, a little, a little choppy. I don't think it'll bother us. Though. I can still hear what you're saying. Uh, okay, we got a couple. Okay. We got a couple of viewers over on the YouTube side now. I guess Sparky's back in Dayton by now. He was making the long drive back last time we saw him. So maybe he'll drop in on us tonight. <clears throat> so primary force, what makes he, you that? He worked in Dayton, right? That's right. So what made you pick a primary force? Just because it looks cool? Or well. You, you ever flown one before? Well, actually. What happened was, is Mike got on the classifieds and asked for a, he was asking for a connecting rod for a OK Super 60 ignition. And I just happened to have one. And I told him, uh, you know what, I'm not ever going to use it. So uh, how about I just send it to you? And he said, man, that's great. He said, you know what? Just to reciprocate, I'm going to send you one of my kits. And it got here today. All right. And anyway, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the plans. I'm, it's a short kit, but there's not that much wood I have to get to finish it. So yeah. now with the short kit, you've got to buy the uh, uh, hardware and 
like the control horns and the and the connecting rods and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Uh, uh, a couple sheets of one sixteenth uh, sheet balsa and uh, uh, a couple of sticks of half inch square balsa. Yeah. Uh, for the leading edge, but. Yeah. But there's not much yeah. that you have to buy. I I'm pretty impressed. Anyway. I, I went through the kit today, looked at the plans. I'm pretty impressed with it. Yeah, I, I don't mind you buying what? some of that extra stuff anyway because the uh, you, that way you get to choose what you want. You know the the type of wood you want, and um, and it's it's all fairly inexpensive. Hey, Jamie. Hey, hey. We got Ron Hess on uh, the chat box with us. He showed right up and. Uh, Correct. So uh, hopefully some more people will be popping in over there. So what's up with you, Jamie? No, oh, not a lot. Yeah. Hey, Jamie. Hey, hey. So I got I got a, uh, a couple of pictures of Wayne's primary for us. I'll um, dig them up while we're here sometime tonight and show you what kind of color <laughs> scheme he used on his. He built it around the time of nine one one. So uh, um, he, you know, was all his patriotic blood was flowing uh, stronger than usual. And so he's got a red, white, and blue stars and bars kind of color scheme on it, but looks great. Talking about Jim's primary force. He just got in the mail. Cool. So did everybody have a good St. Patrick's day? Did anybody go to any uh, you know parties? Yeah, I was all right. Did nothing. Yeah, actually, I did, but I ran. Ryan, I saw your lips moving and your sound cut off. You, you're chopping in and out on sound. Maybe you should turn your uh, try turning your bandwidth down a little bit. Right, okay. All I see is just you and Jim. <clears throat> I don't see nobody else. It's just me and Jim. <laughs> well, I see me. Yeah, you see yourself, right? I see the three of us, me, you, and Jim. Yeah. Say something, Jim. Okay. How about that? That sounds fine. Last week, I kept getting booted off. And yeah, so I that's why I just went ahead and left is because I kept getting booted off and kept trying to get back on, and I and I couldn't. So... I didn't want y'all y'all to think I was tired of yours. <laughs> no, because I kept I didn't even you know I didn't always notice until I saw you signing back in, and so I knew you were dropping in and out. It, it's probably your uh, either your Wi-Fi or your uh, ISP. It, it's out. probably on my end. Sometimes yeah. it gets a little bit slow. Yeah, well, that's what was happening with your audio tonight because you've been a little yeah. choppy, but it sounds all right right this minute. Gerald just got here. Hey, Gerald. Hey, Gerald. Hi, Jim. Um, uh, uh, who else we got there? We got um, oh, Jamie's here, too. Uh. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gerald, Jamie, Jim, me and you. Are you keeping rusty? What'd you say, Gerald? Are you keeping rusty? Pretty good. I'm uh, starting to speed up really well. So uh, things things are promising. Yeah, to the workshop then. I actually did go out to the workshop a little bit one day, but that the, it's still the concrete floor is too cold. It just sucks the life out of out of me, uh, and I start limping around. So I kind of went out there and straightened up a little bit, and um, and sat on my bar stool and looked at the cardinal for about a half hour, and came back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can do better than that this week. I, you know, talking about it instead of working on it, it's getting old. But um, if I'm, you know, physically draining that fast out there, then I I need to wait until I can actually do something without making myself feel bad. Oh, it should be getting warmer there shortly, I imagine. Getting cooler here anyway. Yeah, it ought to be. This week's a little bit cool, but um, still, by cool, I mean in the 60s. 
and that's a heck of a lot better than it was, uh, you know, uh, just a few weeks back. Oddly enough, February had a week of 80 degree days and, and I was out in the shop really making, you know, uh, 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 making a little bit of progress then, but, uh, yeah, it's just that, that concrete floor just, just makes me hurt. And then I hurt the rest of the day. So it's not, not worth it. I do the same thing, Rusty. I, I, I look at airplane and I may look at it for an hour. And I think that's why I'm such a slow builder. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've got things going on in my head about it. It's not like I'm just, <clears throat> not like I'm just staring at it thoughtlessly, um, you know, but I, I'm thinking a lot of times I'm thinking way ahead of where I am right now, but uh, it all comes together in the end. Sure. I'm the same way. On the average, it takes me six months to build a plane. And uh, I think this Cardinal's going to, once I get moving, it's going to come together a lot faster than that because um you know i haven't built very many planes um and so i'm still learning and sometimes i forget how i did something last time and then reinventing the wheel a little bit but um I, each time i build one i get a little bit faster at it already know how to do what i'm doing and so um sure. you know, I'm, I'm a developing builder <laughs> that's what it is well i I'm am a, too apprentice Self-apprentice, that's it. I'm a reluctant builder. <laughs> I build because I have to, because I like flying, but I, I don't build because I love building. Yeah. But at least I didn't have to do any repairs after the weekend. That was a good, good feeling. We all went out and flew. My wife flew and Otto and Max both flew. And Otto was doing some nice um, maneuvers in there and everything came home in one piece. So it was a good weekend to fly. Uh, it was good. Yeah, it's nice to bring them all back home. <coughs> Absolutely. Hey. What's your opinion on a good weight for a twister wing? I didn't. I don't think I weighed my wing individually. Um, give me a number, and I'll tell you if I think it sounds good or not. But that's about as good as I can do. Uh, without center sheeting, which is all that's left, other than covering and flaps, of course, eight point seven ounces. I'll tell you, Jamie, my, my twister weighed 36 ounces, ready to fly dry. Yeah, that, that's what I was told to try to get uh, to, uh, to get mine at, you know, that 36. Yeah, mine came out just under 40. And then um, for balancing and all that, I ended up making it a little bit heavier and ended up at like uh, 41 or 42, I think. But... Uh, that's fine, and I don't think it's all that critical as long as you've got, you know, something like a, a forty size engine on it. I, th I think it's fine. You I've know, heard of forty five yeah. ounce twisters flying just fine. Yeah, but I got my Tom Morris bell crank installed on it this uh, Saturday, or yeah, Saturday. Four inch phenolic. I tell you what, he gives you plenty of lead outs to run. Oh, that's good. There you go. I think, I can't remember if mine's got a four inch or a three inch. I think it's got. Now, a I had, well, notch the leading edge, so the bell crank was. Oh, that's big. Yeah. But I mean, that little bit ain't going to hurt none. I mean, it's uh, not much. Oh, that's right. Anything. Uh -huh. That's extra leverage on your, on your holes, aren't it? The four inch. Be quite interesting to see how it feels. Yeah. And You'll use a wider line setting at the handle, and it'll be it'll be fine. Right. You got adjustable lead outs. If you can. yeah, there we go. Now you can see them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, drilled a hole and got a blind nut on the other side for a tip weight. Are you, um, are you gonna box them in, or are you just gonna run a screw through them? Oh, I just said uh, it's a 440 blind nut, so I'll just run whatever length I need for however many ounces. Yeah. That I got to put. That's exactly what I did on mine. Exactly the same setup. Now, another question. What do you think is a good way for a cardinal?
Anybody? Somebody? Anybody? Or a good weight for a cardinal? I think it's gone well, significantly heavier than a twister. But um, yeah. I'm thinking um, mid forties to fifty, maybe even fifty two. And that's without engine and whatnot, correct? No, I'm talking about with the engine. Oh, with the engine. Yeah. Right. My, my, I can tell you what my ARF Cardinal weighed was about 54 ounces. This is two pounds, nine ounces even. So that's what? 32 uh, plus nine, what? one ounce. Uh, uh, 32 plus eight, something like that. That's yeah, so 40, uh, 40 ounces. Yeah. 41 ounces without engine right now in tank. That, I think that's probably about right. The engine's going to be what eight, eight, ten ounces, something like that. Yeah, um, it's going to be a an forty-six LA. Well, it's going to be probably nine, nine and a half ounces, because the forty-six LA is lighter than the forty. Yeah. So yeah, uh, let's see. Let me let's see one without the RC carve on it is 8.4 ounces. So it'd have been tearing weighs hardly nothing. So now you can basically say eight and a half for that and the 40 with the RC carve on it, 9.1. Take that carve off, it's probably nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a Tower Hobbies Pro 46. That's about the same as an FP40, isn't it? Or no, I mean, a, wait, excuse me, I was not 46. A 46, yeah. The 40 is just like the 40 FP. I don't know about the 46, but yeah, the, that's what I was I was thinking when I opened my mouth. This 46 weighs 12.4 ounces. Uh, I'm gonna guess what 12 was first then. This thing is a brick. Uh, but then they're a lot more powerful too. Oh, just like that. Oh, it's 40 if you sell or something is the same sort of weight. Um, oh, man, I should put this on the cardinal then. <laughs> but I mean, okay, here's your standard muffler that comes with a 46 LA. All right, this is what uh, the E3030. Yeah, yep. right. Here is a muffler for the 46 Tower Hobby Pro. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a difference. Um, Thanks. Do, do, do either one of those have a restrictor inside of it <clears throat> man i i couldn't even tell you what's what's the weight difference jamie all right well the 46 la muffler is 2.9 ounces and here comes a shocker with this big old bad boy 3.6 okay so it's really not that much heavier i'm curious to what it sounds like doing that big old thing I put the guys grinding the the uh, the ridges off of the forty six LA muffler to lighten them up. I do that with the little uh, seven sixty two mufflers. Is is uh, grinding? I ground one eggshell thin and then chopped the stinger off and left it uh, about seven sixteenths inches wide, three eight seven sixteenths somewhere in there. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I don't worry much about weight. I, I you know, I, I'm careful not to overdo things. But I, other than that, I don't spend a lot of time worrying about weight while I'm building. I, I don't either. I tend to overbuild. <laughs> I used to, uh, especially when I was building half a, because um, I know how, you know, hard they can smack the ground and how many times. But truth is. Um, a, a lighter weight plane will break less than a heavyweight plane, so there's <coughs> still some sense in keeping them light too. But, you can you can use muffler weight to balance the airplane. That's what I try to do is make the weight functional wherever I have to add it, rather than just adding chunks of lead. Hi, Steve. Hey, how's it going? It, the other, uh, if you get that 40 size uh, Horizon muffler for their Evolution 40, it weighs just about the same as as their uh, regular muffler, 
for the, the old 36, but it's longer. It gives it more power. And it's just a couple, few grams. They just lengthen the tube out. And I'm trying to remember. Um, it seems like it was a tower, the old tower motor on their RC deal that they had. They kind of copied um, a jet muffler. And you could get them for like 12 bucks. But tower quit making quit making their motors, you know, for RC and stuff. They're bigger ones, but they would, you know, the full size 40 was the same bolt pattern. I got one on a uh, SF46 that's huge and it weighs nothing. It's spun aluminum just like the jet muffler, but it was $40 cheaper. But you can get jet mufflers that'll fit on them too that are real light and they're supposed to be more tuned or something. I don't know what you mean by a jet muffler. What's a jet muffler? Yeah, jet, jet products, jet. Uh, oh, like dub jet. Yeah, dub jet stuff. They used to make them, you used to be able to get them. Dubs are always red. And then if, if you got one um, made for the Evolution 60 and stuff like that, which is the same as a 46, just in a, a bigger, same case, mm -hmm. um, they were blue. Same price and everything, but you could have it blue anodized. Yeah. And they're red. You know? Those are about the coolest looking engines. I like the slanted uh, cooling fins on them. I think Wayne's got a couple of those that he's playing around with, but I don't think he's ever flown one. Road jets? The Evolution engines. Oh, the Evolution, yeah. yeah. Um, once they're broke in, they really run good. And... Uh, the big thing is, though, you have to use the fuel, they say, or you have to run, like, Rojet or PA fuel in them. You got to be, like, 18% oil and stuff and only a few percent um, caster. I can run I can run mine on, uh, on either or, but it runs better on less oil. Yeah. Do those come in ball bearing and plain bearing versions, or are they all no, just, the just ball bearings? But they don't, you can't even get, I don't know if you can still get to 36. They had some, and then people weren't buying them. But they never came out with a 40 because they about went out of business, just like Tower. But they had a 40, and I talked with Dennis at a mission to see if John Brodak could have some made. But I've never heard back on. But they went through all the testing and all that kind of stuff, and uh, they just ran out of money and they quit doing it. Same with the sixty. I have a I have an Evo sixty that that runs really good too. But it's too bad. They those Evos come with several different control line venturis, don't they? Yeah, none of them are no good. They all too big. Yeah, that, they're all too big thought that's what I heard. But what I did was is that I took off a FP20, that needle valve that screws in to the, the barrel or, or whatever on a RC carb. Yeah. You screw that out, it'll screw right into right into the uh, Venturi and it's longer and bigger around. It goes in there, blocks off a little bit of air and the damn thing runs perfect. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. Anything that'll restrict it. That's. Yeah. They say though, Jim Lee makes a, a um, a uh, Venturi and needle valve set up for them. That they really run good. I bought one on Stunt Hanger, and someone had made up a sprinkler system for it, and it actually is like a PA motor, but I've never ran that one yet. So, but I just found it was a bitch to break them in. They vibrate until they're broke in, and I'm not, I don't know why that is. But once they're broke in, the the damn vibration goes wow. away. They run smoother in hell, and they run really good. I got one on one of my airplanes. I haven't flown. I've only flown it a couple times. So one of them RS no, it's a uh, Phil Cartier um, Gotcha Streak. Yeah. And I took it up to FCM and uh, had a bunch of people fly it, put it through the paces, and uh, 
They said it flies good, but they couldn't believe how good that motor ran, the power it had on that big of a airplane and stuff. But it's I love the motor myself. But it's heavier than a than a LA forty six because it's a full ball bearing. Yeah. Those ball bearing engines put out horsepower like uh, a much bigger plane bearing engines do. But you know, I run the same propeller and stuff as a uh um LA forty six and it it'll turn the same propeller and everything. It's you know, it's seems to have a good power and it was inexpensive. I think I bought them I was buying them for like seventy nine dollars. But you have to you know, you have to have something that you can put a little bit of more nose weight on. Yeah. Just so what else is going on? Well, I did a, a swap on a one of the models that my boys fly. It had a um, Flash 35 on it. We wore that out, and then we put on an Enya 35, and that was marginal power. And I just bolted on an Enya 45, and the case is the same physical size. You know, it's 001 Enya 45. So we'll, we'll put that on, and we'll give that a wheel, a, a wheel next weekend, hopefully. But those oh, old. Yeah. Old era, old era engines just aren't very powerful. At the same time, we were flying on the same length lines. We were flying a Magnum 25 Pro, and that just outdid it for power, no trouble, uh, against the 35. The 25 just had a whole lot more horsepower there. It was just surprising, the difference in airspeed. But, now, what kind yeah. of your 35 Was it the old uh, square intake one? or Oh, the round one. This one here. <laughs> I just pulled, That's the one I just pulled off. Um, it was a nice motor, nice run, but just no horsepower. And it's on with the round intake. That's the model 5225. So we put the 145 on. But I know they're not very powerful either. I had one on a big Acrobat years ago, and it just had no power. I pulled it off and I put on a, an OS FB40, and that had way more power. And that's where you imagine what, like the... Um, 46 FX or the um, the X55 are just a huge power compared to in LA even I imagine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just bought a well. Who knows how long it's been now? I just found it again, but I bought a uh, in your 45. That four, I think mine's like a 4002 though or something. I don't know what the difference is with the one and the twos and. Is it the Schnell ported one or the? No, um, it's it's the uh, loop scavenger, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, the the later series has got a um, um, a heavier case, and the um, it made a lot more horsepower up top. Whereas the earlier ones, the first ones had the ball head like I've got on my Ringmaster, finless head, and they had a, a molded in Venturi. On the control line ones, and later on they went to a um, um, the normal Venturi insert, and that's the one I've got on here. It's a rough plane that my boy Otto has been flying, and that's the. Now is that the, is that the forty five or is that? Yeah, that's the forty five. That I just bolted on. That's the six double oh one. Or six. That's yeah. what I have, six double oh two. And I don't know what the one and the two is the difference. Well the, the two's got a heavier case and it uses normally it's got a single ring. Some of the six double oh ones had a twin ring. Oh okay. but it's a it's a good motor as a heck motor, but the performance compared to a modern forty five is really poor. Like I said, my FB40 outperformed it mostly. It had a whole lot more power. So I had that um, Sig Acrobat and pulled it off that and put in the um, 40 and it had a whole lot more power. Yeah, I, I bought one of them uh, Inya 30 Schnurleys ball bearing. And yeah. I want to try that because I got a uh, just the Inya 30 plane bearing, the old ones. Um, I guess it's it's Schnurl ported, but it's got a, a metal liner. It's not ABC or nothing like that. Yeah. But 
I put that thing in a nobler and that thing will turn an 11 4 prop and and uh it pulls that noble around like nothing yeah, yeah but the, you know ported ones i think they're called the ec something they bought out the cx version and the XL or something There's so many different versions it gets confusing and the early ones are popular for team racing um, <laughs> oh yeah that was a good one for 15 racing that thing is there's nothing that touches that little 15 for stock what we do here in Michigan on the tour to Michigan we uh, we fly the 15 any 15 for racing of its stock and it's got to be plain bearing and stuff like that and everybody had to go to it because these other engines you couldn't they wouldn't stay with it it was so much faster it was just crazy how much faster it was because knowing which model you've got and um, the right one. So, um, my son Otto flies a, a little bike name with a Enduro 9 on it, and it's way more powerful than the OS 10 on his other little um, Kitty Hawk that he flies. <laughs> a lot more power there. It feels more like a 15. People have seen is it a 15? He said, No, it's an 09. So it pulls a little bike train around really well. So, yeah, I heard that they had real good power too. Yeah, you just got to get the right one, I suppose. Like this, basically, from their engine, but um, nice little motor. That yeah. one's got the exhaust on the opposite side. Basically, they've got so many different versions. Um, yeah, no. the little Hubro stack. Yeah, I got. Yeah, you know, ain't working. I got uh, a um, in your thirty-five that's built on a twenty-five case. And that thing really seems to run good. He only made him for a while. It was some kind of super or a stunt. They call it Indian 35 stunt. But it's, it's the 25 case. And he bore it out. And there's like a, uh, you can see there's a space between the head and the, and the cylinder. So he raised it up so you can get a little bit more stroke out of it and stuff. And fit it in that case. And um, hopefully that'll go in Samantha's uh, classic airplane. But it's a ringed aluminum piston with a ring in it. So we'll see how it, uh, you know, how long it takes to break it in and, and get a real good um, cylinder fit, you know, with the ring and get the compression up. I've never run a ringed engine before. You never ran one? Uh-uh. Yeah, they, uh, I don't know, RC and stuff like that, you know, we ran them and, I don't know if there's that much of a difference. All we knew was is that if you're flying on dirt fields and stuff like that, that ringed engines will it'll chew them up. It don't chew them up like it does an ABC. Boy, you suck a little bit of dirt in an ABC motor, and you get a big scratch in the One or piston or cylinder or whatever. Yeah, and then the scratch grows and grows, I guess. Yeah. To where the rings, they're more forgiving when it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, the helicopter guys always wanted a ringed engine because of that, that thing that they're so low to the ground if they're hovering and they're picking up dirt and they're more tolerant. I think it's a bit like that with some marine engines. They prefer a ring too. But the ring engine, if, you, if you've got a bad ring fit, then you know all about it though too. And some engines just don't seem to have a good fitter with their ring than others. And if they've got a twin ring like the old Foxes, it's a lot of extra drag or Atwood Champions, things like that where they've got a twin ring. A lot more drag, whereas the more modern ringed engines, even this, I think with the Enya, they went to a thinner ring on the 6001. They had a fatter ring, like a 1 16th ring, and they went to a thinner ring on the 6002. And the cold, cold seal isn't as good, but at high RPM, it makes a big difference. It's the same with racing engines, where they've gone to thinner rings now, and it's often hard to get that um, same seal as a I think the Generation 3 um, Chief motors, the 5.7s, they, they went to very thin rings on their uh, motors, and then they had oil, um, losing oil problems, sealing problems. They, they, they started to have longevity problems. But that's where it's more Do any of them have an oil ring like an automotive engine does? A, a compression ring and an oil ring? No, no, because you, your oil's in your fuel, you don't need an oil ring. Only, even the full strokes don't use an oil ring. Oh, my boys are home. I'm gonna have to run. I'm gonna okay. sort them. 
Yeah, so I've, I've never had a problem with a ringed engine. Old Mokies right. and stuff like that. They were an ABC ringed. So they're actually fitted like an ABC and they put a ring on them. Yeah, so it's the same metallurgy as the piston, huh? The ring yeah. and the piston. You know how they do it, I don't know, in the old Mokies, but yeah, they, they always had an ABC that was, you could run it without a ring on it because okay. it was like a true ABC. Yeah. And they put the ring on there, but it did something about, because on an ABC, they're a tapered fit. You know, the pinches at the top. Yeah, pinches at the top, right. So when, when you're coming back down, I don't know if you ever flip, you know, one that's not broken good, you'll get like a suction on the bottom. You get a loose fit and the air will go by it. Mm -hmm. So as it came down, then the ring would seal further down and give you more, more horsepower per fire or whatever compression okay compression it, it further further down on the stroke and not just that little you know 16th or eighth of an inch seal the compression starts building earlier on the upstroke i guess yeah and it goes further up further down on the downstroke yeah so but i'm not sure if this 35 is done that way or not but with it having an aluminum piston it may be fitted it in there like that so it's kind of a a ringed abc or whatever you want to call it or a ringed you know we call them abc yeah. because what about uh, what about dykes rings i've seen model engines uh on the internet that have dykes rings which uh doesn't doesn't seal at all until ignition begins and then the the heat and the uh concussion i guess from the uh, uh combustion makes um the yeah ring fan out because of the shape of the ring it pushes the ring out against the sides of the cylinder wall that sounds and, and if you flip it cold it doesn't feel like it has any compression at all you yeah, brought we, up. we used to run uh, in quickie rat way back in the day we ran uh k and b 40s with dykes rings and the dykes ring is at the top of the piston and like just like you said as it comes up it spreads the ring yeah and creates more compression well what and me and my brother when, i don't know i was 16 and i made him like 13. we got into some racing and sheldon's hobby or whatever had to deal with a 35 uh can be 35 i think it was a 70 series they call it or 70 something series and we got the airplane. I forget what the airplane was. We got that, and the engine shipped cheap. And everybody else was running Super Tigers and stuff like that. And uh, so we go to a race. Never flew. We never flew in the airplane anything. And uh, we get in the race, and um, I forget they had four or five people up. But we fired off, took off, and we lapped the field in the first tank of fuel but what we didn't realize is when you get a dykes ring hot you even have less compression so i couldn't get it started so we end up losing a lap trying to get it started and then we'd gain the lap back and when it was all said and done we took fourth place well everybody couldn't believe how fast the engine went i mean it just tore everybody else up but it ended up being that they found out if you backflip that engine on a dykes ring, the thing will take right off and start. And once they figured that out, nobody ever won no, no other rat racing in 35 without, unless they had that KMB 35 on there. But yeah, that thing would really fly. It used the same case as the early 40, didn't it? The 35. Yeah, I think it did. And I can't remember. It was a. The 35, maybe it was 35, it was the 70s, I think it was the 76 version because it probably came out in 1976, 76 series or whatever they call that in the KMB. But yeah, then they went to 40 and I got a couple of them. They're, I mean, you start them with a starter and the damn things, they really fly good. I mean, the first Brodak 40 was a KMB, especially made for John Brodak. It's that same. That same motor. I know a lot of guys still love it. Why they see one, they really, you know, they really tried to 
to get their hands on one. Yeah, my brother, my brother likes them, and also I've always got one on that um, profile of his wherever, the, wherever I've hung it. But yeah, he's got a Can B40, and it's got one with the Dykes ring. But we're just using an electric start on it. Now that yeah. you know that you have to hand start it, you don't have to flick it. You just put your electric start on, and away you go. Yeah, that's what I do now too. But if you you know, like say your starter battery went out or something like that, you just prime it a little heavy and back flip it. The things will take right off. And I don't know why back flipping it makes it backfire or whatever. Then that blows that ring out, and boy, it, it just it just takes off. You know, we're some of it, I think it's just it, maybe it's the lot. Oh, I don't know. I can't explain it. But some of the ring motors, you find you got compression backwards, but not forwards. And it's something to do the way the wing seats when it's going the opposite direction. But as I know, especially with the Merco 61, they often have very poor compression when you're flipping them in the forwards direction. You give it a backwards flip and all this compression's there. But RC motors, I always back flip my... I've never used a starter in RC. But even with an ABC motor and stuff like that, I, I always back flip my motors to start them. Keep your hands out of the propeller just... Just flick it, let it go up on compression, and the thing will start right up. And I've seen when you flip them through, they don't. And I don't understand why. But I'm, I'm lazy. I tend to use the electric starter whenever I can. And I have two batteries in my starter box, two gel cells, six amp hour gel cells. Yeah. And they've never go flat on me. But a lot of guys use um, a starter with a, a cordless drill battery. It seems to be the popular thing now, too. Oh, well, what we do here now is is that we make a little plate, a little aluminum piece of uh, um, channel or L. And then we just pull it on the bottom and put a old uh, four cell for electric airplanes when, when the batteries start going bad and they don't they won't keep the capacity up high enough. We'll, yeah. we'll throw one we'll throw them on the starter. And I'll go all year long without charging it. Yeah. yeah. I, I use all my old model airplane batteries. Well, here's some old picks I use on that old electric drill. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Yeah, well, that's like, I'll get that. Wow, there. Look hey, around. Here's, uh, I, I got something to screen share for Jim. This is your, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. And. Here's your primary for us, Jim. Let's see. Share. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Got, got a it. bit out of that. Oh, very nice. Oops, I just screwed up. Stop sharing. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's a pretty simple little plane, too. Which one is that? That's a primary for us. Oh, okay. I want to get one of them. Wasn't there a sync kit? In the they were at one time, but you can get on Stunt Hanger and, uh, oh, Mike, uh, what's his, the guy who designed them? Mike Pratt. Mike Pratt. Yeah, Mike Mikey Pratt. Pratt. He'll sell a short kit of that thing. Them things really fly. Oh, I keep saying I'm going to get one, and I just haven't done it. Hmm. But here's the other thing we do with, with the starter. Yeah. Just put a piece of plywood, bolt it, screw it on the bottom. And then just zip tie another piece, sandwich it in, and that's just yeah. the old uh, um, four cell pack that Samantha flew in one of her airplanes. That it just doesn't hold it, you know, have enough power after it's so old. But I mean, you know, I haven't charged this thing since last year. I got way too much battery on mine. I didn't have any idea what I should use. I should have, I could have figured it out, but I didn't, and I ended up getting it. It's so it's so damn heavy. I hate lugging it around. But, uh, I've gotten to where uh, in contests I use it though, because uh, uh, I've spent too much time more than once just flipping flipping batteries. Yeah, I'll have to I have to bring some of these batteries to a contest and give them away because everybody around here now has them. Because after a year or so, we won't fly them anymore, and then it's like. You know, they say throw them in a, a tank of salt water or whatever before you dispose of them. But we just we just been giving them to people, I mean, and putting them on their starters. And yeah. they work great. 
instead of hooking up and you know we just you see here that we just put a connector on the back of that cut that the thing the wire down and so to charge it you just take it apart throw it on your your charger and you got it charged up in no time and like i said it's good for about another year wow that's pretty good yeah. but and i just throw that in the case and or the uh toolbox and we take it with us wherever we go and we have a problem starting one i'll always contest now i always use a starter just for the reason is is that i kind of like everything going the same exact way all the time samantha does too and if you go start flipping an airplane and you can't get it started and she's wondering am i going to go over in time and all this kind of stuff right so it's just so much easier to have that there and go boom start it and everything exactly the same every time we fly. That's a good so, idea. So then you don't get all nerved up and, you know, yeah. usually we get one flip starts, but I had a lot of problem with inverted engines. I can't get one step, one flip starts out of them. Sometimes yeah. they start, sometimes they don't. Yeah, well, I had the um, Senior 703 too, and that got me using the electric starter all the time because it has a habit of running backwards the timing on them is such that they have that the tendency you flip start them and they end up running backwards even though they're a 60 they love running backwards because of the timing the 7033 the later um in your 60 mark three is a lot better if it does that but the 7033 too certainly got me used to using my starter because it would just throw you you know you start the thing up things running backwards you're not expecting it to yeah so i could just got to run if, if you don't, you know, you ever want to need to flip it, flip that one backwards and it'll run the right way then. Yeah, probably. It, it really, it's really weird. You know, that's RC engines are timed that way too. And that's why I always back flip my RC engines. Because usually if you front flip on the damn things, they'll hit you, hurt your fingers, yeah. and, you know, bump backwards. And it's just easier to back flip them and they start right up. And But the other thing is we're always starting them at idle. It's not like we're, we're starting these engines at full bore. You know, when, when, when the kids were first starting to fly, I was using Gilbert, and that used to always run backwards because it's a side porter. And oh, yeah. They, they, it was a great engine for them to learn with, but we're beyond that stage now. I've just got to go and check and make them a cuppa. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Hi, Tom. I went offline for just a minute. I don't know if it stopped recording or not. Oh, you disappeared? Yeah. I see, looks I like see things just coming down and going up. And Hey, there ain't no paint on that, Tom. Get off. You can't be on here. Hey, I got paint on her, Betty. I'm, on my, last, no I'm on my last paint. <laughs> I have been uh, I have been masking for hours, dude. <laughs> hours. I, I see you got a bunch of masking tape on the bottom of that or on the, on your uh, phone. Yeah, I've got the uh, I've got the top done. I uh, sent, a pic I sent a picture to Rusty. Is one side pink and one side's blue? Or is uh, it yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I couldn't decide whether to do a girl or a boy, so I decided to do both sexes. That oh. way I don't get in trouble, you see? I'm covered. Yeah, you are covered. Yeah. So, right now I'm shooting my last color. I was Sorry, I was late, but I was setting up the paint booth and all that. Hey, have you want uh, have you tried any of the uh the airbrush um um thinner? Um, when, when you're using, when you're using your airbrush paint, they make like today I seen it, they make a reducer. Oh, uh, it, it depends what, what paint you use with it though. Oh, okay. Me, I, I, whatever, you, you know, whatever, you know, dope or whatever I mix up. I just, if I need to do a little area, hell, I just put it in my airbrush and spray it. Well, I know I was just wondering. You said that you were using regular thinner or something to reduce your uh, your paint that you're buying there? Well, uh, you know, just like what Sparky was saying last week to Jared is is uh, is I use the 3608S for slow, but and I mix it with the acrylic that I have. Oh, okay. But what Sparky says about the Randolph paint, use the Randolph thinner. Yeah. If, you know, whatever manufacturer paint you buy, try to buy the manufacturer thinner. Well, that, that's why I was wondering if, you know, if I should, because we were looking at 
getting the paint for this model of Samantha's. And I didn't know if I should buy the reducer or just use what you use, but they make well, reducer. Too. That's why I wanted yeah. to know if you used it, if it works good. I'm telling you, what I use is more like, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you you would like the finish, but, you know, it's not the, it's not the, the greatest. I mean, you know, to me, the, the greatest stuff would be dope. Uh. Dope color. Do, you know, dope finish everything, you know, all the way from sealing the balsa all the way to the clear coat. That's what I'm trying to do on my cardinal. You know, sort of every, all your material, all your chemicals match. Yeah. So when I'm doing, you know, it's, I don't know, you know, I mean, for me, it works for me. For one, it's cheap. And two, I can make it look I can take, I'm polishing a turd is what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, using this paint, you know what I mean? Well, I was talking to a guy today at Hobby Lobby and he was saying that they're doing all kinds of stuff now with that airbrush acrylic paint. Yeah. And then using like an automotive clear over it. Yeah. And he said, you can't believe the what this stuff looks like. Oh, you know, I, I, I agree. I agree with him. The acrylic when it's clear coated, oh man. I mean, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, because he was man. doing car models, you know, bigger car models and stuff like that, plastic car models, and painting them all up. He had pictures of the stuff he was doing. It was like, oh my God. Hey, I, I watched a guy, I watch uh, uh, Power Nation every Sunday, and uh, they there was a guy that was painting with an airbrush and he they was doing a smoky abandoned uh, 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 car Trans Am and they even brought in uh, Burt Reynolds to sign the inside of the of the glove box on the outs in the in the interior oh. and uh, this guy took and painted flames oh my land living they look so real I mean yeah. just with the uh, just all he had was uh, uh, Oh, probably a dozen different stencils, like uh, solid stencils, like I was using. Yeah, you know, I see that. Just lay it on there and spray around it. And just spray around it, you know, and then he'll move that stencil while he's spraying, and that and that paint will just feather to clear. You know what I mean? To yeah. nothing. And man, it looked like real flame. That I would love. I it would looked love real easy, that. but I have a feeling it wasn't. I seen that same show. Yeah, it probably looks easy. Yeah, this guy, he, I mean, he was doing it fast. I was like, oh, yeah, just do it like this. And I'm like, man, I'd have things screwed up if I tried to. Well, as as I look, you know, this dude's been doing it for years. Yeah, I know. I mean, you know, 30, 40 years, you know. If you can't get that good in your craft at that at, at that long. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry you don't see me. I'm trying to find a picture. But anyway. Yeah, you should be good at doing yeah, that. I've watched, <clears throat> I watched airbrush artists at craft shows and that sort of thing. It's just amazing, beautiful art. No, I suppose it's like pinstriping. It's an acquired skill. Those people that are good at it make it look so easy. And you see them pinstriping the bike or a car. and you know, It's just it's so amazing how they, they just have that Boom. control. Got I don't know if this makes a difference, but I have a picture of my Stuka in the sun to see maybe what the paint's doing. So here, I'll share my screen real quick. I can present it to everybody. Are you I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, that looks that's, nice. I mean, Good. that's in the sunlight, man. That looks great. That's that really cool. That looks so, good. What kind of clear you got on that, Tom? I, I just have uh, I just have clear dope and yes I should have the uh, the uh, y you know a urethane because it's hard you know okay. it's a hard paint. Well, it looks really sweet. This is amazing. It, it's a hard paint when it dries. <laughs> now I I was doing some research on fuel proofing. All right. Now what do you think? Uh, uh, anyone ever thought about motorcycle gas tanks? What do they use to fuel proof that? 
The inside of them? No, on the outside. You're so a thing, I think. Yeah, you're a thing, I think. If if okay. you're if you're coming over, you know, trying to fuel it up, you don't want to drip gas on it. And if you do, the same stuff Sparky puts on the nose of his planes. That's automotive urethane. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Dupacolor makes it in an, in uh, in our our uh, acrylic. Um, it's it's an acrylic clear coat. Either enamel or lacquer, probably enamel. But uh, the stuff acrylic started, enamel. Hang on, I got the uh, yeah, enamel. Um, I think it's two part stuff that Sparky uses. Okay, the stuff here that is a uh, acrylic enamel. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this here can be sprayed on the both either both either acrylic or on the top of enamel. But it. Uh, I think Sparky uses a two part. Um, uh, urethane. Right. It's uh, he, he mixes it. Right. You know, he puts in a, a reducer and he puts in a, I think a hardener. Yeah. Well, I've done a few motorbike tanks in my time, but in the old days, I just sprayed them with acrylic lacquer. And if I was putting on like a, a pearl coat or whatever, it just got lots of clear at the end of it and you just let it harden and hopefully the petrol wouldn't harm it. But mm -hmm. um, nowadays everybody's using two packs. So I figured, yeah, the, the, the clear dope is not 100% fuel proof, but I'm a type of guy I like to keep my plane clean. I wipe it down all the time and, you know, oh, after a run. And when I fuel my airplane up, I don't even like to get the shit on my hands, you know. So I'm right. real careful not getting, you know, I don't all of a sudden squirt out, a, you know, accidentally a whole bunch of fuel, you know. I, I watch what I've been doing. But right. I get it all over everything. And, you know, these planes, I didn't even learn the full pattern yet. So I'm trying to build up stock so I can learn the full pattern. So my planes, you know, I'm building ain't going to last 20 years. Now, yeah, if I want to uh, uh, build a plane to last that long, yeah, it's light. First of all, I think I got my building down to where it's light enough to where I can use a, a, a urethane like that if I wanted to on the whole plane. Ron Vass just chipped in and said, thank God for Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about doing wings. Thank God for Monaco. Hey, let me tell you, finishing a plane like these guys do when you're beginning is really kind of intimidating and, you know, a little bit and scary in a way of, of because you mess up, man. You, you know, it's, a, it's either a lot of work or, well, it is what it is. Yeah. A learning experience is usually right. what it is. So the, uh, the more I do it, the easier it gets and right. the better and the better it gets. So that's, that's all I care about. Now, if I was doing worse and not getting better or getting slower at it. Yeah. I wouldn't get the hang of it. And I'd say hell with that shit. And I just Monaco. <laughs> yeah. there's, uh, there's two things to be concerned about. You have fuel proof. And then you sometimes need hot fuel proof. I have, yeah, a, I have yeah, a yeah, you my, about the afterburn. I have a fly streak in my garage, and it was fuel proof. But when I put a different motor with different different exhaust, the exhaust braid got close to the bottom of the fuselage, and it was hot fuel, and it took the paint off. Oh, in other words, it was a hot burn off. Yeah, I always wondered okay. what that meant. Yeah, so hot fuel proof is different than fuel yeah. proof. Okay. Yeah. Like, like on, on your motorcycle, you're not going to have hot fuel on that fuel tank if you spill it. It's just no, fuel. correct. But fuel but proof, hot fuel proof are two different things. My that's like my tongue muffler. It's closer to my fuselage yeah. than the regular muffler that's away from it because by the time it comes out, and you're already doing what 55, 50 miles yeah. an hour, the right. wind cools that down pretty quick. You know, right. but the tongue muffler is really a big concern you're you're absolutely right but yeah. hey you, you know i always uh, thought hot fuel proof meant hot fuel as in 15 percent, 20 percent nitro that's what i that's, thought hot fuel proof that's meant. what i thought it meant too well yeah. Yeah. The, uh, started, I that too but eric gloss always said hot fuel proof 
Yeah, it's actually like your your castor oil, you know, comes out of yucky, slimy, gooey crap. <laughs> yucky, slimy, and gooey. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty hot above. stuff. But I use uh, I use simple green. I mix up some simple green and water in my sprayer. Let me tell you, that cuts the, that oil just like that. That was that Windex shit. I just you know, use like, alcohol and uh, and then dry wipe it to you know get the because it always brings in a little water and you get kind of spotty leftovers after alcohol. And then I just dry wipe it with a with an old cut up uh, sweatsuit material is good for that. No, I I have a roll of paper towels and I wipe her down with one rag and then I I take her off. Yeah. I wonder how much fuel people do put on. I weighed my ringmaster, my super ringmaster, when I first made it, and it was, um, and I weighed it now twenty five years later. Lots of fuel soakage, and it was two ounces heavier. I wonder if that's sort of typical. But, I thought it would be more, to be honest. I thought it would be like 10 ounces because it just seems heavy and fuel sodden now. But it actually, when it was two ounces almost exactly when I my old measurements. It ruins the wood. We know that. I still have more masking. I got to go get my paper. Be right back. All right. I'm going to step away for a second, too. I'll be right back. <clears throat> Charles, do you find that you're you're building up weight though? Because you do a lot of flying with with your models with your Strager. Have you put on weight from the, the amount of flying that you do? You know what? I haven't uh, I haven't tried. I haven't waited. Um, except for at contests, but I'm always making changes to the plane, so it's it really doesn't stay the same. You know, um, I mean, like this is the third fuel tank I have in there right now, and. I'm moving around in the shims and all kinds of stuff, so it's um, it'd really be hard to say. But I try, I like Tom. I I try to keep my plane as clean as I can. I wipe it down. I mean, I do a final clean when I'm pack up the plane ready to go. But every fly, if I can, I will wipe it down. <laughs> oh, there's Terry. Dude, oh. hey, you, guys, you guys got this this paper right in a roll. You know what's really sweet that really cuts this stuff really well? What's that? Put it in an empty box. Tin foil. Tin That's foil box right here. What, what kind of paper is that? Bullshit. It's just uh, uh, paper from uh, I got from uh, O'Reilly's, you know, automotive store, Ooh. auto body. <laughs> well, it's you masking paper. It, uh, yeah, you it's can buy it at Menards or I think Walmart carries it now. Roll this brown paper. Oh, it's really cheap, man. I mean, cheap, cheap. Who are you keeping, Terry? Hey, good man. Just staying busy. I I was um, listening to a little bit because I was epoxying the deck on my latest boat. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's another use for those little servo screws. Um, instead of trying to figure out how to clamp all these difficult shapes that I build, all that you use is those um, RTL servo screws. They have like a built-in washer. They really grip. Right. After the thing sets up, I back all the screws out. I fill the screw holes with a mixture of epoxy, a little bit of flox, and uh, sanding dust. So you've got an epoxy screw now holding it all together. That's true. You're right. It yeah, fills no, in all those it, cuts. Yeah, yeah. It works that's phenomenal. Cheap. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's used on full-size race boats, and I didn't think of it. I just copied it. Very good. Yeah, but it works. Of course, boats aren't as concerned about weight as. Uh... Well, well, they are though. Yeah, we we are. Like you want, you know, there's a minimal weight, and you want to keep the weight low, and you don't want a heavy boat, man. Weight is the enemy of everything, <laughs> including your health. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. That's as I munch, munch, munch. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I love all you guys, but 
There Some of you young guys, and uh, Jared, he's not on. I looked last week. Boy, that God bless you, man, but give me a call. Let's talk. Yeah. Have him join us, Charles. Yeah, but I need to lose some weight, too, man. It's all 25 five, but I'm like 220-something, you know? Yep. It's a battle, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. I got a little keg here. Hey, I saw your Stuka. What a beautiful airplane. What a beautiful airplane. I saw the photo when I was putting my last clamp on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're doing good, Tom. It's been, it's been fun, Terry, in, in a way, but uh, sometimes when I, you know, there's so much masking. <laughs> yeah. When, when you get done masking, man, you feel like your eyeballs are hanging down and... <laughs> You know, you feel like you've been taking a, a, a college test or something for eight hours. I hear you. Yeah, if you're hey, hey, if you're learning to fly the pattern, I think I'd get a couple profile ships and about four rolls of Monaco. <laughs> Yeah, and save those beautiful works of art for later down the road. Uh, the uh, the Stuka, yeah, I could if yeah. it flies as good as what I think it's going to do. Yeah, then uh, it might it might be my primary plane. So if it's my primary plane, well, I've already got the bastard profile, uh -huh. you know, and I've got a uh, a, a C C party. profile. So now I got two airplanes that I can practice the. Uh, the, the the pattern on oh yeah everyone says well just go ahead and get yourself an airplane you know and do well, it well the thing of listen. it is you gotta have a good flying capable airplane to be able to do the full pattern i i'm gonna put up some plans for a franken twister fuselage and instead of having to go out and try to find a half inch piece of balsa that's straight and sea grain and all this other nonsense you build this thing up like a complex piece of plywood. Charles knows he's seen my stuff up close, I believe. Anyway, all that you need to do is get a hold of Brodak and get a wind kit. The rest of the stuff is all sheet stuff. And you can get creative with the tail. You just need to keep the square inches more or less. You don't want it too big, but you got to have enough tail. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that that's true. And several of these young guys that I've tutored through the hobby shop built the fuselages while they were waiting for the wing ribs kits and stuff. And Brodax is very nice. They will give you, you know, they threw in everything for these kids where it, it came with sheet wood. And, and that's um, I don't remember wow. her name, but you know who it is, Charles, over in the kit side. Um, oh, I can't man. think of her. Yeah. Get what, up. what a nice lady. Oh, what a nice lady. I met her and talked to her. It's sweetheart of a lady. Everybody yeah. there. Is, no. Yeah, so all nice. I, you need is a wing kit. I'm talking it's like 11 bucks. Yeah. And the rest of the stuff, I'll send okay. you the plans or I'll get them to Rusty and he can get them to Sparky and you just laminate this together and you use this real dangerous glue. It's called <laughs> aliphatic resin. It's real dangerous. And you need to wait it because it takes 24 hours to cure. I am using epoxy though on the motor mounts. Right, right. And I don't know who, you know, I build all my profiles and all my ships, everything even RC, I start with that motor mount and build out. I don't know right. how you can build a fuselage and then come back later and try to epoxy in some motor mounts. Yeah. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. That's that. Uh... Jamie's doing it wrong on that twister. He's got no motor mounts in the fuselage. That's the first thing you build is yeah. that is that tuning fork. I sent Gerald and you, Charles and Rusty, my little tricks of drilling those holes for the epoxy. Yeah. 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 Epoxy now, end, yeah. you can do what Sparky did, and you can use pine, oak. You can use aluminum. I've seen aluminum mounts. 
Oh yeah, there you, go. you really hey, need why? Why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just take the wood you have and laminate it together, and cross the grains all up, and cut it and square it, and you've got something really good to work with. Yeah. Yeah. At least that's my opinion, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it's an art form, and we're all artists. And um, man, and uh, Steve, uh, your daughter's plane is just a work of art. It's getting what there. a beautiful air. Oh man, what a beauty, though. Oh, beautiful. It's getting there, but I love that it's a take apart too. I love it. Where's the latest pictures of that, Steve? Yeah, I gotta get some more pictures and, and throw up there. It's just we're working on the fillets. And it's like, I know it's pretty, the stuff is pretty easy to work with, but I can feel from one side to the other that I don't have them exactly the same. So we end up adding and sanding. But both oh, yeah. Are, you know, we're probably too anal. Yeah, on show it. Yourself. You can't look at yeah. both sides at the same time. Okay. You take their, your wife's credit cards when they come, you get them from her. <laughs> and then I cut them and I make these little fillet tools. See, this is for that boat. Yeah. So I've got my little fillet side here and I have my big fillet side there. And then this nice. is just the standard stock size. And you use this little tool and you can wipe it off with alcohol. But I usually, um, it, depending on the model, like my P47 for that fillet on that big elliptical beautiful wing, I have four of these. Because you know how the fillet fans out towards the trailing edge. Yeah. Right. So I use these to make sure that they're even on both sides and smooth them in and uh, very little sanding involved. Just make up a couple little um, fillet tools. Yeah. And well, we do. Credit what it cards is, is they that send you in the mail. Use those up. Because yeah, I got to draw a fillet cards. We I made mean, sure that this was offset, you know, that it wasn't going to turn it in on the circle you know yeah, it's right. not completely at zero it's moved just a teeny bit but that right. that makes this side different than this side yeah yeah right it would. so what, what i'm doing the fillets we're looking at yeah it, you gotta like, use this tool that's the tool yeah <laughs> that's one of that's my favorite my, ones my my do alcohol and just rub that super fill yeah that's that's, that's my doctor's tool, tool. Yeah, that's your doctor's. <laughs> and He's Dool getting paid Dool more Dool for his Dool. than yours, though. He gets paid Dool. 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 for that. If, if I could, if I could charge as much as he did for using that tool, yeah, God, I wouldn't have to worry about any airplanes I wanted. That's to build. what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's right. What tool are you guys talking about? I didn't see it. This tool. <laughs> okay. I get it. <laughs> you're you're old enough to know about that tool. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 50 years old. I remember the doctor wanted to use that tool on me. Yeah, <laughs> well, you're gonna see it more often. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, your doctor sees this tool all the time, don't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah when you get 50 and older, man, you get to use the doctor's tool. Well, that's like with me when I turned 40. My mom, you know. You're 40 now. You got to have a, um, a physical and all this kind of stuff. And she a kept it for like eight, <laughs> eight months. And I finally said, fine, I'll go in. I'll have a physical because I knew what I was going to be like. They found I had prostate cancer the first time I got the test. Oh, my God. Lucky you went, though. That's what I said. Yeah. They said six to eight months. Oh, my God. No saving yeah. me. That I've had it for six to eight years and didn't know Jeez. it. Wow. Wow. So you've yeah. something. I was the youngest one in Michigan to have prostate cancer until two years ago, and a guy beat me by like two years. Un unreal. Wow. When they found it, but they they figured I had it between somewhere in between I was 32 and 34. I wow. got it. So, so or any indicators that you had it? it pardon me? You didn't have any symptoms or any indicators that you had it. You just no, I yeah, just yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Well, the only the only symptom that I had was that um, I found out I was going to be a dad, mm -hmm. and they said I couldn't have any kids because my mom took a 
a uh, fertility drug in the in the fifties. And my brother doesn't have any kids, and it's like ninety nine percent chance you can't have children and stuff. Oh and my god! When they were developing that stuff in the early days, they really overdid it with the dosages. And uh, so, um, my mom got married at fifteen, and everybody said she ran away to get married because she was pregnant. Well, I was born ten years after they were married. Yeah, you. She wasn't pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> obviously yeah. but um yeah she had she took fertility drugs for that and um they said not so then when they said i found out i was going to be a dad i didn't believe it and you know did a, a, i bet you believe it now yeah i went down <laughs> and took took the paternity test and it's like yep she's yours and then but i found out a month after finding out that samantha was going to be born that uh I had the prostate cancer and that I'd never, once that was out, that did all the kids in. Or, oh, yeah. But they think that the cancer in the prostate made it work. Yeah. That yeah. It, mm. But it was so deformed and everything from from the uh, the drugs, you know, the yep. drugs, that it wasn't a normal prostate anyway. Well, not to change the subject... <laughs> but I'm dealing with that cancer shit, and I couldn't get on here for the last couple of weeks with it. So let's go back to this subject. I heard this when I was epoxying. Uh, yeah. nice. I've run three of these motors. I do run the um, – I run pantyhose on everything because I'm in Florida here. We fly off grass, and the sand, you, Steve, you know. Every, Wally, all of them know. Sugar oh, sand. Knows. One drop, Sugar yeah. Sand. One drop of sand in there or two, and bye bye motor. Yeah. I mean, sell it to a collector because you're not going <laughs> to run it much longer. Was that that thirty six? Yeah. Uh, Evolution thirty six broke in. They're beautiful. I'm telling you, but you're so right. When I first fired it up on the test stand, my stand was jumping all over, and I thought. Oh my God! I must have lost a piece of the prop or something. <laughs> Man, but it leveled crazy. out within the first third of the tank, pretty much. Yeah. Then it, it, by the time I don't know, I got about two or three gallons through it. It's just as smooth as anything. Oh yeah. Well, this I don't know thing why probably that... has about a half gallon through it, and it just purrs. It's beautiful motor. Plenty. I of don't power. understand how it smooths out. What what rebalances it? I really... don't know. It's something at the bottom of the piston stroke is what we figured out. I've got one new in a box that hasn't been run. And I'm not, I don't crank it through a bunch, but we felt it. You know, there's like a, kind of like a big flat hard spot at the bottom of the crank. And after the engine runs, that goes away. Oh, okay. It's, it, it's smooth down there. Like if that makes sense, I'm certainly not an engine guy. Al would know. We need to ask Al this question. Yeah, he probably would have something for us on that. I yeah, don't know. Or, or he could ask his engine guru because I've read some stuff that guy's posted. He really, really knows motors. That was and that Brodak 40 is not shaking. Yeah. Well, the but, other week we were running up at Fongaray and Otto was flying his Magnum. It's Otto here, but he was flying his Magnum. And for some reason, he lost part of his spinner. And the thing was vibrating like crazy. And I just thought, let's get through the flight. Let's just get through the flight with nothing else falling off because of the yeah. vibration. But, uh, it's pretty scary when that happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's deadly, man. Deadly. Yeah. You know, so if anybody, you know, wants a good engine, them are great engines. And what I found, I got another used one, and some friends of mine got them, but people run them, and they vibrate. They don't like how they run, so they sell them. Yeah, they don't give it a chance. No. It's like, hell, you can get them for like $45. It's like, what is you that? Like you know, the Evolution 36. From, the Evolution. Uh, Horizon. Uh, uh, Jim Lee's got an Evolution on that GB he's got. Right. Yeah, they, oh, yeah, they, yeah. Well, I, like, yeah, I was paying good, like 69 bucks for those things. Yeah, I know it. And well, you'd have to buy two because it was like free shipping over a hundred bucks. So you buy two and then they had a coupon for 10%. So you end yeah. up paying about $69, no shipping per motor, but you had to buy two at a time. 
I was giving those things away to my friends to get them back into flying control line. And then all of a sudden the availability went away. I was like shocked. Well, listen, with a lot of the motors now, there are no LA-46s. Everybody's snapping them up really quick. And the yep. other one, PSP-32 and 36. Yep. I think PSP have stopped making those small motors right now. Yeah, you ain't lying, man. I just picked up an LA-46 for $28 shipped two days ago. Wow, <laughs> that's a steal. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I, got this, steal. I got this little thing. It's an Enya 25, and you can rotate the cylinder on it. Oh, wow. So this is going to go on a, a combat streak one of these days. And oh, I love the combat streak. A rear exhaust combat streak. Very nice. On there. That combat streak's a good flying airplane. Yeah, it's I got good, one. Like, like it's a good warm-up plane. You know, it's a good plane. Like if you haven't flown uh, a bunch, you go out and fly that and then put your other plane up. Yeah, I, I got one now. I call, it a, I call it an American streak because I took the combat streak and I added the tail and Stuff off of that. Um, Brodak has another streak. I can't think what it's called. They have the lightning streak. Lightning streak. Lightning, lightning streak. streak. That's it. Good. But I took the lightning streak tail and stuck on a combat streak. So it looks a little bit different. Cool. Yeah, that's sort of like, I think that's the English version of the uh, flight streak. I think uh, George Aldridge did both of those. But that one, I think the Lightning Street was originally built to be distributed in England. Oh, that's, that's what I've heard. Hey, Jim, what's happening, man? Hey, Terry, how's it going, buddy? Good. I was sorry to hear about your uh, <clears throat> twister. I watched <laughs> it on the replays as I couldn't get on the last couple times yeah yeah i killed it that's all right um do another one and this hey listen i was telling the guys i don't know if you heard all you need to do is call up rodak and get a wing kit and i'll send you my um fuselage drawing and you you build up the fuselage out of just um eighth inch sheet by laminating and 16th inch sheet and you get like a complex piece of plywood built fuselage with the three inch stretch. And then you just put the uh, new wing and the tail feathers is just all sheet material, as you know. Yeah. And uh, you can play with the tail shape. I give you a couple choices. You just want to keep the square inches about the same and the vertical height about the same. You don't want to get it too, too low. You don't you, you lose the effect. But yeah, this is this is that combat streak I made. Oh, up. that's a beauty! That's a beauty. With with the lightning streak, I took the off of the uh, um for the canopy from the uh, uh, profile. I widened it out, shaped it, hollowed it all. So it's but that's that's the lightning streak. Very nice. That looks good. Then the tail and everything and. But I got to redo it because you can't use tautening dope. This, it just, it got so tight, it actually cracked the. I believe it. You know, so I end, I'm going to end up, I got that, and I got one here that just, it just opens up. I mean, that, yeah. tail, that tail looks like it's got sky ray jeans in it, too. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, that's the lightning streak uh, tail. And elevator, and I just what I did was it's the wing and the tail and everything, and I threw away the profile body and just built, scratch built a, uh, a box. The, the um, combat street. That's a good flying airplane, man. That's the the one with the rear exhaust will be really sweet uh, when you get when you swing the exhaust around that that'll be sweet. Yeah, this one's set up for a Fox 35. I mean, this is older, but I'm going to change where the beams are and make it inverted and just run the the pipe underneath it. Gotcha. You like the one wheel 
That's what it showed in the when I scratch built it. Yeah. But so I, I put that on there, but I don't know. It's fine. I, it it just done around with one wing tip laying down. Yeah, I I don't even put gear on mine. Well, one thing is it, it makes it easier to find the your wheel when after you crash, you don't have to look for two. There you go. <laughs> you gotta find one. Yeah, it, 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 it only one one strut. Only one yeah. strut. So where the hell's my landing gear? Oh, there it yeah, is over it there. It's hey. to the back of the motor. Have you guys ever seen this? Hang on, here. You talking about that spray gun? Yeah. yeah. See this? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got wow. one of those. I don't like this cap. Yeah, yeah that's from Harbor Freight. It, it falls it? off, Harbor man. Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. But you snap it on, it stays on. It's got a bit of paint stuck in there. To, uh, yeah, why don't you use it once? And and you're not supposed to tip that upside down in the first place. You I know it. Tip but it a I little. Mean, Sometimes, no, what, sometimes yeah, I like a little to do this. On it, it'll stick sometimes there. I like to kind of do this a little bit with well, my it, paint. It'll inside. stay. It'll stay. You know. Yeah, it, yeah I'm using that to paint all like my it. boats, man. That and a and a um, Iwata. What it is is that I found out when you force it on there, you can get it to stay good. It's just a bitch to refill it. Yeah, mine one gets really hard to pull off. Yeah, Can't get it easily, and yeah. And then you spill your paint when you're trying to get it off because you've been yeah. pulling so much. You got to sand it out a little bit or keep tuning the edges up. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. I bought Harbor Freight has a different one with a plastic cup. Yep. I got that one too. And it screws on and that's, that's a little easier. I got. You know what you can do? You can buy other cups from Micromart that fit Harbor Freight's guns. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. 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 you guys shoot with. Yeah. How many pounds per square inch do you guys shoot with? Well, I, I'm shooting acrylic between 18 and 20, and that's through my Iwata airbrush. On the touch-up gun that Tom just show, showed, I'm covering a bigger area, and usually I'm shooting like a two-part clear or something with it, so I shoot like 25, uh -huh. 28. You just use a, a test board to, and and – Watch how it lays yeah. off to the side. Well, I actually paint the back of white plastic spoons. That's uh, a, that's a model idea. car guy's trick. Yeah. And I, I paint a lot of styrene like Wally does. And one of the things we're doing on some of our cars, not that I do cars now, but you can use these metal flake nail polishes. And you thin them down. And um, you got to use... Um, um, you don't want to use acetone, but you use one of the tool and all type thinners, you know. Hey, Tom, where'd you get your respirator? I want to get one of them. <laughs> Invisible respirator. Uh, yeah. Actually, I mean, behind that looks it's like it's real that. easy to breathe through and everything else. I got an exhaust fan <laughs> that goes out outside. It's a great big plenum. Oh, okay. Squirrel cage exhaust. So, What are you spraying onto it now? Uh, what are you spraying onto the plane now? Uh, pavement black. But but is that acrylic, right? This is the uh, fifty cent stuff from Walmart. Yeah, see that stuff's safe as heck. He's acrylic, fine. acrylic. Yeah, water. he's fine. It just has alcohol as a carrier, and yes. and the mist will be sucked away or float down. That's very safe. Now you're very stopping safe, and though. starting in the middle of your target aren't you supposed to spray completely across it um before you let go of the trigger and then come back do another squeeze instead of stopping and starting in the middle of the piece yeah. you you talk to sand and stuff you really don't have to as much are clear. you talking to me yeah what now oh i was asking you about looks like you were stopping and starting to spray in the middle of your target rather than sweeping all the way across and stopping then sweep all the way back and then stop oh i'm only doing the outer perimeter uh, okay of the plane what's in the the color what's in the center here they don't that's that's uh it's already painted underneath that's masking okay 
That's his one pink and one blue wing. Yeah. yeah. But with color, if you're going to sand it, I don't think it really matters. You know, I don't know. Hey, Steve, if, if Samantha hasn't picked a color for her airplanes yet, go online and look up Wicked Colors. They're, um, it's an acrylic. You can paint her plane with acrylics and just make sure that you've got um, clear over it that's hot fuel proof or fuel proof and you're good to go but the colors that these acrylics have and the fluorescence are unbelievable that's what i used hobby lobby today and i took yeah. some pictures she wasn't with me and i showed her they got pearls and you can't believe uh, yes the colors exactly they have in acrylic. yeah wicked colors and stuff is yeah. a good brand yeah, it's, yeah. It's called, yeah wicked something and uh yeah I, I forget who it's actually made by but they have another name on it but yeah that yeah. was pretty cool there at hobby lobby so that's probably what we're going to try. And then since it's electric, it doesn't really matter what we clear coat it with. Oh, yeah, electric. Oh, you're good to go. Uh, what you do I need? probably use that that regular um, painter's touch 2K clear, not the two part, just a, you know, rattle can clear one part. Yeah. So what do I need to get um, <clears throat> besides the applicator like Tom's using? Um, for my compressor and and all that to start spraying. All that you need is they have um, Harbor Freight has it. There's a little moisture trap and a gauge. Uh, okay. That's now all you need. It's got a gauge on it, but I need a separate yeah. regulator. Is that what it is? Well, yeah, Which but it yeah, it, it's just like a secondary one that comes off, and it gives. What what I do is I run that. I keep my con compressor where it's not real noisy i run i have pvc lines to my bench over there and that's where i have located the the one you know valve with that and i have twin collector bottles on mine uh -huh. so then i just plug my uh my airbrush or my spray gun right there but you can mount it directly on the compressor after your you know your regular valve yeah but it has a moisture trap and then the other thing you can do is when you get vitamins or pills or something and they have those little moisture deals. Yeah. Save those and put them in that bottle before you paint. And it really super oh. dries the air like you wouldn't believe. Okay, that's a good idea. And I, I, I'm guessing that it gives you uh, a little bit Real constant adjustment too than the big yeah, a constant and not the pumpy. You know, sometimes even though you're running off a tank, you do get that little surge from the compressor. Yeah. So what that will do is with those two jars, it helps balance that out. Okay. Get a nice flow. Well, I do. I run two. I got the one on the compressor that I set at sixty pounds. Yep. To run the compressor up with the with the automatic gauge to one hundred and twenty. So I drop it in half, and then I use my gauge, you know, my regulator there on the airbrush to drop down to. Yeah, that's good. about what I do. I think I I'm running about 75 on mine. Yeah, and, yeah. The yeah. Bench, and then I bump it down to 18 to 20 or right. 15 or whatever. Yeah. And and you got a finer adjustment too. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. so that doesn't sound like it's all too expensive. Oh, about 40 bucks. Okay. Hey Dennis, and then you'll maybe get some fittings. Well, the the, the, one, the other gun there that you can get from uh, Harbor Freight comes with the regulator and stuff on it. Yeah, it does. It, okay. it's another i don't know ten dollars more but you get you can catch it on sale and, yeah it's uh, a touch-up gun yeah okay yeah, they have that on coupon for like 20 bucks now and then yeah well there's my next birthday present still hadn't got the chop so i can knock out two birds with one stone now because I, I do want to use i got a compressor it's stupid not to be using it and spending all that money on pre stuff and, and if you're shooting acrylics, which is easy to shoot, when you're at Walmart, buy some um, automobile windshield cleaner, the blue stuff. That's what I use to clean my airbrush and my guns. Oh. Just use that. I don't. You, some guy's thin with it. I don't do that. Really? Some with guy's the... thin with it, with the blue automobile windshield fluid. Okay. It's like a buck 88 a gallon. Yeah. But I use it for cleaning. It's perfect. As long as you're shooting acrylics. 
If you're shooting enamel, then you've got to use, you know, acetone or oh, the paint I use, or something. The Duplicolor paint I use has two types. It has acrylic enamel and acrylic lacquer. Correct. So you got to be careful what you thin with on those. I or, or wash with that. whatever, but those are the shaker cans, the rattle yeah, cans. Yeah, that's that's rattle can. Acrylic water base, right? Yeah, it's water alcohol base. Okay. And the Walmart brand, believe it or not, I mean, thank Tom. I went and looked. They don't have quite the color selection that Wicked Colors and these others do, but they're all made by the same company. In fact, I hope it's not the one that just blew up in Texas, but they were made in Texas somewhere. A paint company in Texas? Yeah. Well, there were, they've had some factory explosions, and now they're having that um, unfortunate individual is uh, or group is doing those bombs around austin which is very okay. bad uh, and uh, i've been busy with my wife and um, i just want to say this and get it off my chest In the last two weeks youtube has been attacked by this deep state left-wing nonsense it's been equal to the book burning in nazi germany and if you think i'm lying go check it out what youtube you said it Freedom yeah, of speech, right. man. It's at there's a war going on. There is an absolute war going on. Well, there, I heard something about like with YouTube and uh, Facebook, something there in England, Cambridge, something or other. Yep, it's all tied together. It's all the same thing. That they were stealing everybody's information. And well, that's just the tip of it. They're censoring everything. You know, it, it's. All right, listen to this. All these Russians that are dying in Britain and all over Europe, yeah. they're all connected to Uranium One, people. Wake up. Hillary and the boys are whacking them. Get serious. Look it up. They wow. tell you such nonsense on the puppet show news, man. I can't believe it. Well, that Uranium unbelievable One deal is, the only thing I don't understand about it is that it's a Canadian company and they can't take their uranium out of the United States. They just it's have gone. to run to mine it. It's gone. Believe me. It'll all come out. It'll all come out. It. I don't Please. know. Hey, it, Dennis, it's all the curtain's coming up and they're freaking out. The, the Rothschild banking side of it are freaking out. Because their girl Hillary couldn't win even with the setup in. So that's right. why they're destroying YouTube because that's what beat her. Truth and information beat her. And they can't allow it. So they're silencing it. And that's what's going on. They demonetized just about all the decent people. The other ones just got wiped out. Charles Jaronism got wiped out. Tell me what threat he is other hey than guys, that's TV enough. Up. Let's get back to airplanes. We got yeah. Dennis on here who we hadn't yeah. let him get a word in edgewise for the oh, past sorry. five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Otto wanted to talk about his plan. He, he wanted to talk, tell you how he painted it. Yeah, well, I ended up when we flew it. I yeah. flew it, Dennis. So. <laughs> See, well, the, hey, Dennis. Yeah, some of you, some of you some of you might remember this, so. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Was that done with acrylic or airbrush yeah. paint or? It was acrylic. And, yeah. And, and your, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tony. And you used Some... these little water-based acrylic, yeah. acrylic enamel paints. Excellent. Excellent, Excellent stuff. Is that like the stuff that Tom's been using? Similar, yeah. Similar. Yeah, they cost, they cost a it. I haven't seen them, seen them that big though before. Most of them are just smaller little bottles. Yeah, well, the the camera I think is distorting it, but uh, yeah, they're they're only like uh, they'd only be like four ounces. They're not they're not huge. Yeah. And they they, they do a, a model. Some, yeah. If you've got a large model, you need two of them. But well, yeah. anyway, I just went out when we flew it. So pretty recently, uh, I flew my this pony in the. Um, I tried to do a ground takeoff, but uh, for some reason it didn't take off. I, I think the motor's too small and the 
when, yeah, when the, 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 the wings too small and the mud too small. What does it do? Just roll out a long way and then struggle no, to get in the air? No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, but it's one of the reasons. I mean, sometimes it rolls along. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you try pointing it straight up wind like uh, full size planes take off? Maybe it'll maybe it'll get off better that way. I usually uh, or a crosswind even, and then once it gets up to speed, it comes into the air and it'll lift it off. Yeah. So Otto, are you saying the nose is over? Yeah, yeah it just goes. But once you hand launch it, it does fly, but it's it, not very it's, maneuverable. It's not very. It's, it can't do weights, can't do wing overs. It's and is it uh, land the same way? Oh, it lands well. Is it, a, is, it a, is it a slab wing? It is, it is. But it was it was his first scale model, and, and you're basically outgrowing it. It can't. Uh, no, it wasn't my first one. It was this one. Oh, oh, oh you did? Yeah. But that, that couldn't do a whole lot of maneuvers. This, either. this couldn't. Do, that, that, that one up there was a nice one, but it couldn't do nothing. This one. Yeah. But that, this one. that was my first one. Yeah. And that could hardly do anything. Yeah, but that, that's just progress. You've you've uh, gone past slab wings now. And now you're flying a, a model that's got a proper aerofoil. Uh, yeah. A kitty hawk. Yeah. yeah. I was amazed at what my uh, slab wings twenty three would do, though. It's, I actually uh, uh, I was doing pretty good loops and 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 figure eights and stuff with that one. But my uh, my nieces tore it up one day and it got so heavy I had to put a TD on it because the Black Widow wouldn't take it off anymore. <laughs> then I ended up chopping the tail off so that the stab was an inch behind the wing and then it turned into a pretty snappy little flyer. Oh. Well, um, hey, hey uh, uh, Otto, your Tony there, if you put it on your table and if you uh, put it on its spinner, does it stay there or will it fall back down? Well, right, right now, if you was late, put the spinner down. Yeah, it has to do with the landing gear position, too. Yeah. You read my mind, Charles. It stays on its nose. It, it, stays, it, stays on its nose. it should fall back to its tail. You need to slowly. bend the wire forward until when you do that, it slowly falls back down to the mm. tail, hitting the ground. And then you'll have mm. it close. And you better roll out and take off and land. Okay, we'll, we'll try that. We'll, we'll yeah, that's how I get most of my uh, planes to, to roll out nice and land nice. And I got this from Wendy Ranowski. And not personally, but just yeah. over the hundreds of videos I've watched. And he got that from, I think, Bill Simons. They asked him, how do you always, how do your planes always land? And he told him how to set it up. So you put the, the spinner down, and if, and if it stays down, you got to keep bending the wires until it falls back down with a tail falls down. And that's the trick. And it'll, 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 it'll take off. Well, and it'll I land think, nicer, too. It'll, it'll be easier to land. Well, I I'm sorry. I'm going to have to do so. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. See you, Otto. See you later. Bye. Bye. Excellent workmanship from your son. Excellent. Yeah. That's beautiful. Good. He gets some patient with the a young kid. Yeah. yeah. He gets some patient when they don't do the maneuvers that he wants. So he's flying uh, um, my wife's old um, aerobatics trainer now, and he's doing quite well with that. But um, I'm trying to get him to fly um, some other bigger models. His younger brother, when I was trying to fly, it's just too much line pull for me, Dad. I can't hold it. It's too much. But you, we forget those things that um, when you're young, you don't have the arm muscles to hold back a, a large model. I'm probably trying to push them too fast with some of the models I've asked them to fly. And it's a big jump from those cheap wing models to a, a more aerobatic model, a heavier model. And, yeah, you, you sort of forget uh, you did that over many years, and I'm trying to push them all within a couple of years, which is probably my mistake. You can start right. uh, junior size, you know, like uh, 15s and even 20s. They could probably be comfortable with that size planes, like an Acromaster or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's what we built for Max. Max quite likes the, the 15 size, where Otto's got used to flying a bigger model now. But you just need different models for each boy. That's what I've, yeah. I've come to yeah. the conclusion.
I you think can your bike break, that'd be another good one. The other thing, too, is you can get one of these therapy balls and have them squeeze that and get their finger muscles. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it ain't going to pull their arm out of the socket, but usually it's their fingers that can't, mm -hmm. don't have enough muscles to hold that handle. It's grip yeah. strength. Yeah. 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 That, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah, those little spring things, too. Yeah, spring you got the spring one that with Samantha. Yeah. I, I forget my mom had one or whatever, and I got one of the therapy balls and just had her squeeze it. So I watch TV and squeeze it, and it's hard to believe how you can uh, strengthen your grip up quickly. Yeah. That's you a very good point, Steve. Yep. Yeah, I used to when I was driving service uh, on uh, copy machines. Uh, I used to keep a keep a squeezer in the car with me all the time, and I, you know, on long straight country roads i'd switch from one hand to the other and just you know keep something going all the time yeah maybe that's why my hands were locked up in this position <laughs> <laughs> Hell knows. well at least that way the handle can't come out of your that's hand that's right i don't need any strength now <laughs> that good if i have to yeah you might want to just say i don't really need a uh, safety thong just can i just avoid that x and a uh, that get, get my hands uh, authorized by the ama to pull out my <laughs> handed yeah, so you didn't uh, truth, is, truth is, I have let go of that handle a couple of times recently. Uh, last uh, May, in my first official flight, I was doing an overhead eight, and it came out of my hand, and I had it by my pinky. That's all I had that handle by, and I reached up and grabbed it. That was after having smashed up the twister a few months earlier, and so I was I was on it in a hurry when when I when it came loose that day, and. And that was actually my winning flight. <laughs> I got a little close to the ground on one of my uh, overhead eight loops, but uh, I held it together. Hey, Terry, what kind of clear did you say that you can use the K2, but without it, the two parts? Yeah, it's uh, called 2K clear. Uh, let me grab a can of it. I'll show it to you. Hold, hold yeah, it. Yeah, please. I want to see that. Yeah. I always thought the 2K meant it was two parts. Yeah, I, 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 seen, I thought I seen 2K clear. And uh, I, you know, everyone said to use the 2K mat, and that's what we bought and used. But I'm wondering. Okay, uh, try a test spot though, Steve. I don't want you to. Oh, you know, it's like all the rest of the yep, I, you know, I, I would. Before. Yeah, sure. It's you know, it's you know, I get it at. Walmart even has it. Just make sure the cans haven't been tampered with. Yeah. But that, you know, but other than that, I think Jim used the uh, the other two-part clear, and that's what I use on the boats. Um, I can mix two-part and spray it on, but that um, it's called 2K clear, I think, is the other one, the two-part clear, where you take the top and go to the bottom of the can. Yeah, 2K and, max. Yeah. yeah, 2K max, that's it. That stuff's Max. like glass. Two K yeah. Max. Yeah, but it's uh, can get heavy quickly, so I can get three boats out of it. Three of these forty-eight inch long boats out of a, a can. It's it's I guess enough for a fender or something. Yeah. Here again, Al would know that stuff. Hey Tom, are you using your hot water heater for your test painter for your test board? Pardon. Are you using the hot water heater back there behind you for your test board for paint? <clears throat> um, well, it's uh, <laughs> it, it's my old water heater that went bad in uh, <laughs> October last year, and it was cold out. I had a bunch of things to do, so I got it hauling out of the basement. But right now, it's it's a great thing to test my uh, gun <laughs> with right now. I love it. But anyway, I went from a gas to electric, so that's great. I got rid of my gas heater. I just wanted to make sure that's what I was looking at. That's pretty you sure. Know, you know, Tom, you just reminded me of something. I got to hang on a minute. I can't hear you. All right. Kind of reminds me of that one comedian. You must be a redneck if. Uh... Yeah, you use your yeah. hot water heater. Oh, hot water heater is a test for you. You must yeah. be a redneck. Yeah, I know. Oh, I got something similar to that. I got to find it. Dennis, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm just sitting and enjoying the conversation and then 
I got I got some new toys. Oh right, I love your toys. This year, oh, beautiful. On that. Hey, let me uh, let me see that. Let me get back to you. Oh yeah, the jet. Oh, man, that is very That's nice. Oh wow, Dennis has got the stuff, man. Is that Ro Ro is that the uh, Brett Buck edition or is that the regular yeah. one? No, it's a uh, Brett Buck edition. Oh, okay. Let me see the pipe again. Is that one of uh, Rich's pipes? Yeah, really nice. Very nice. Yeah, I guess there's. I was talking to him about it, and inside there, there's a baffle, whatever that's made of really super thin aluminum. It, it took him months to figure out how to turn it without destroying it to make it thin enough. But I see yeah, the aluminum right uh, there in the end. Is that yeah, not very, carbon very fiber? End, there's you know, a piece of aluminum. And then inside, there's, like you said, there's a little baffle. Uh, yeah. You know, about in here. And then they also inside a, a piece of aluminum on the inlet side. Yeah, very cool. And like I said, it weighs just a hair over an ounce. And it's, yeah, it's, a, hell of, it's a hell of a pipe. I know um, John Paris just ordered one because he couldn't get a pipe for any of his motors. And I was talking to Rich there in Texas. And he's like, hell, I got them. You know, I, I made them for a long time. He goes, nobody ever calls me for him or whatever. And I told John and they're sending him one. But yeah, I mean, Rich Oliver does some nice stuff, him and him and Dub. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, this is a, this the engines are just a, a jewel. I mean, I hate to run it. It looks so nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You almost want to put that on a uh, a profile airplane. Just so yeah, so people can see it. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what plane is that going on? Is that going on your circulus? It'll be a, a new circulus that I'm making. Wow. That'll be beautiful. That'll yeah, look that good on the top. Uh, what what plane are you going to bring to the Palmer? What's that? So what plane are you bringing to the Palmer? Or what planes are you bringing to the Palmer? Uh, it will be uh, the, my circulus with the Super Tiger 60 in it. And uh, a profile. And then a classic. I got a flight streak that I'll, I'll, I'll I fly in, in, in classic. Very what, good. What is, man. what is or what is Rich getting for a sixty-one now? Uh, let's see. Well, I, let's see. I think it was close to four hundred dollars for the 60, 61. Okay, I know and he's I getting like a hundred bucks for the flight. Pipes a hundred and five, I think it was. Okay. See three three seventy five for the sixty one. Mercy. The the header was forty, and the pipe was one twenty five. Oh, okay. How much does it weigh all together? Uh, I have the engine on the crutch, so it's, it's a little bit heavy. So it's uh. No, I mean your your header and and tune and your pipe. Well, the, the pipe itself is just a hair over an ounce. Wow. Sure looks like wow, awesome. and the header's on the engine right now. Let's see. Well that's like you know, it seems like three seventy five is is expensive for something, but um Rich Oliver is still flying the original test engine is sixty uh sixty seven. It's like fourteen years old. Yeah, this is five point three. That's five point three. Yeah, this is a pipe. This is a header. This is the spacer block and the bolt, and the uh, special the neoprene here and a, and a deflector. So this is the whole unit. Five ounces. Five point three ounces. Wow. And let's see. Hang on. I'll get the weight. weight here, so um, huh? That's a lot of weight. That's a, yeah. That is a lot of weight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the header, spacer, bolts, and the pipe is 2.35 ounces wow that's what i'm talking about hell yeah hell yeah hey you want to trade <laughs> <laughs> hey it, it just weighs a little because it's more heavy duty it'll last a lifetime man <laughs> <laughs> and you can beat somebody to death with it if you have to <laughs> yeah to make fun of my plane i'll just yank it off the plane and just start whacking <laughs> <laughs> that's normal weight there for an all alloy pipe. So are you, are you close there by Brett Buck, Dennis? Uh, about an hour and a half away. Okay, so he can help you really get the thing tuned in and yeah. props yeah. and everything else. 
Yeah, yeah. he's uh, already gave me some some uh, some information to like the spigot and so forth to use on this. He had in fact, yeah. before I ordered, I contacted him. He told, I asked him, hey, "What do yeah, I need?" Me. I gotta get a drink. Get the right stuff. So he gave me all that information. You already get your spigot put in. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't tough. You just use that that eyelet from Stig and. Did now? Do you push it through? In, or you just do a press fit? I did do a press fit, and I want to kind of um, relieve that so it it'll go in flush. The uh, needle valve's gonna hold it in place. I can't see it ever moving or. You know, yeah. Once I got yeah, it in there, I mean, I really had, out. yeah, I had to really push it in, and then I've never, you know, I've never had a problem. When I did that to a Rojet seventy six, and it, it it really works well. Huh. I mean, I got a Rojet. Well, Samantha has a Rojet for what he was given to her, and we got it on an airplane. And... <clears throat> but that, that thing really seemed to run well on the plane that it was on, but that's that one John DeTabio gave her the second um, JD Falcon ever made, so she doesn't fly it or anything, and just because it's from the 50s or whatever. I, I can't believe how tight this thing is at the top. I mean, it is really, really tight. And uh, and that's how, that's how they are until you get them broken in. Well, when I was in, we were, when we were in Texas, um, we had that 76, and it, it was like, I don't know, 90 degrees. And I primed the engine without a, without a damn uh, glow driver on it. I always just backflip it through to, get the, the fuel atomized. I'm back flipping it through and the engine started without a glow driver on it. It has that's that what kind of I heard they will do. Yeah. I mean that's how good the piston fit and everything is on that on that motor. Wow. I've heard of it. I've never actually witnessed it. I know people more people have told me that their foxes did it than any other engine. Yeah, I never had a Fox do it. I, you know, I had an OPS forty do it also, but the uh, um, the Rojet did it, but it started backwards. It was running backwards, and that usually means it's flooded. Yeah, I had too much fuel in it or whatever, and that thing started, and then I about burnt my hand up because <laughs> not thinking if I was. If a RC airplane runs backwards and we start them in idle, you can just bump the cone and it'll flip the, it'll yeah. run the right direction. Well, I tried that with the with the control line motor, not thinking that that's an open venturi and it was running backwards at a good clip. And I hit that with my hand like that, and all of a sudden, yowzer, that was hot. <laughs> yeah, you know, speaking of these motors starting, when I I connect my battery to my Stalker eighty one. I always hold one one of the blades of the prop when I put the battery on, just as a safety. Oh, absolutely. I always yeah. hold hold the prop when I clip the igniter on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, so how much paint did you use there to paint that fuse? And um, what did you think? That is, a, that is a four ounce cup on that sprayer, and I filled it up twice, two thirds of the way up. Oh, okay. So I actually used, uh, I used, uh, this is a uh, two fluid ounces right here. Yeah, uh, those are the bottles. I used, I uh, I used an, uh, an ounce and a half and then thinner. And uh, on my container there, I put, I measured up with my ruler, measured up increments, and I've done it so much, I just know how much thinner to pour in it just one time and shake it and I'm done. Oh, okay. So. Like, so Basically, you didn't even use two ounces of paint then once the thinner evaporates out and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Let me tell you, this acrylic, when it evaporates, it's light. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's about, well, okay, I made my Stuka. I weighed it 29.2 or something like that, 29 ounces. My finished weight with everything installed is 32 
32.8 ounces. Wow. So three ounces for all the, the paint? Yep. Mm -hmm. Usually the, the yeah, acrylic's been, coat everything? The acrylic's been weighing out about one and a half to almost two ounces of weight of the plane, and the rest of the weight is uh, dope, clear dope. Oh, okay. Are you keeping a notebook on all of this? Yeah, I got it right here. My yeah, weight. I'm definitely going to do try the acrylic and keep because we never can keep a, a dope paint job down under eight. You know, they ever say, "Oh, eight ounces." Should ours weighs fourteen ounces when we're done? Um, that the uh, my first my big P40. Yeah. You know, it's got a fifty-six inch wingspan. You know, and it's got a six inch wide fuselage and big tail for stunt. You know, um, uh, that that plane. Yeah, that was 15 ounces. 15 ounces of color? And yeah, clear. because I didn't have my paint booth, so I didn't use dope. I To put to seal the balsa wood, put the covering on, I used uh, poly minwax uh, water base. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. It's real heavy. It was plastic. Heavy. It was heavy. Well, we did yeah. a two-ounce finish on Otto's Hellcat. And, and then I sprayed on my primer and kind of just sanded it until it was all the same color. Yeah. You know, and then I left it. I didn't sand the primer off. <laughs> you know, and I used fucking five cans of primer. Oh, that was that plane. Yeah, that was the big misunderstanding. Yes, it sure was. <laughs> well, anyway, I had to put a four stroke on it to carry it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the bastard. Um, that's when I really got this paint refined. That was the second plane. Uh, the color was, uh, after it was done, 1.5 ounces. Wow. And, uh, yeah, Perry, I had to try Perry, that. Perry, I had to go out, I had to go out, I had to go all the way to my truck and my buddy's truck and take my airplane out and show Derek Barry that, that bastard just, just show him the finish on it. Sparky was talking to him, and I was walking by, and Sparky goes, hey, hey, Tom. And I was like, yeah. He goes, you, you, you got that dollar paint job of yours? <laughs> and I said, sure. So I went and got it. Derek was like, how much was this? I said, well, this one here cost me $1.50. <laughs> and he's like, what? But, wow. You know, yeah. it's nothing compared to, to these other guys, dude. I mean, you know, as light as it is, you could probably get by with, with spraying urethane on the whole plane, and yeah. then you could rub this son of a bitch out, and I bet you'd look good. That's that's, that's what I'm thinking. I want to keep the paint down <clears throat> to a minimum and then and then clear coat it and be able to buff it. But, I mean, the, the real – the shit to use, man, is really dope. Dope color, dope everything, man. And then, you're, you know, urethane on top or something. Sparky's right on there, especially you know Sparky was a painter in the air in the in the Navy. But I was in I was in the Air Force and I worked at McDonnell Douglas and uh, I used to shove our planes after we got done installing everything to get painted for the first time, you know. So I've been in the paint booths and seen all that stuff, you know, and stuff. So they they know how to work pressures and and the big thing is they know their chemicals. Sparky knows his chemicals. And there's another guy too. I just never can get it as light as what it, what they're they're saying they can do a paint job at. Well, um, you, you know, I I guess I guess you, you know you, you could maybe it's your sprayer. I mean, or because you can regulate how much volume of of paint goes through the goes through it. Yeah, but some of it, you know, we try to put it on thin. You can see through it. Well, if you hold it up to light or the sun, yeah, so what? Yeah. But as long as it's down on the ground, <clears throat> the car max, or in a building getting appearance judging, you ain't going to see through it. You'll get coverage with that acrylic. That acrylic is light. Use yeah, a heat gun between coats to set the color, just a little heat. And and fun. see, this this paint. It's actually, when it dries, it reminds you almost like chalk. 
It's it's plastic particles. If you heat it, those chalks melt together. Yeah, a real fact, little bit of heat. heat in there. Sometimes yep. I want to just a little I'll, bit. I'll get a yes. I'll get an area where I get too thick of a spray, and I was like, uh oh, I'll reach for my gun and heat it up just a little bit. It'll flow out. Yep. Just just to get the to evaporate the thinner more rapidly, and then I'll I'll shut the heat off and then let it dry slowly. But I tell it's you one thing. Stuff. You don't want to spray this stuff above uh, your surface temperature, above 70, 75 or 76 degrees. Okay. Because it won't adhere to the surface because it dries too quick. Well, I'm painting at 85 and up all day long. It sticks for Terry. It must be Florida. I don't know. Well, what it is is your relative humidity is too low and all your carrier is evaporating between yeah, the right. mouth of the gun or the barrel of the gun and the surface you're going to. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Your higher humidity in Florida might prevent the problem that some yep. stuff. about. Yep. Well, anyway, it's all good. It's all good it's, shared it's knowledge. Good your right plan now. looks good, man. Well, uh, I, might, I, might, uh, uh, I might hook here, I'll give it a little bit, but uh, I'm going to start taking the, I'm going to unveil it. <laughs> I'm going to start taking the masking off, man. Well, yeah, if it, if it dries that fast, that. Let's see it. Yeah, it, it does, but uh, I like to get the masking off because I don't like for it to get too dry. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. then when you pull it off, you could actually pull the paint, you know, it's actually good to pull it while the paint's wet. But I had to take a break. Let my uh, let my paint room air out a little bit. Now that that paint room, you didn't see a bunch of mist, did you? No. Uh. Uh. I like that. Uh, if you saw my uh, exhaust work of how I how it how it exhausts. Out I was of my about paint. to ask you how you did that. I just put a. I just went and bought me some boxes and duct taped them all together and made me a plenum. And then I made uh, you know at the end of the at the end of the box, you, you got to come down and cut a hole. You don't want to go out of the end of the box. You want the air to go up and hit the end of the box and then build pressure up and then go out. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, okay. okay. So that. when you do that, you get your pipe because I'm going straight up and then I'm going, and then I'm going straight out. You yeah. see? Well, on the inside after that, what I did was I cut a strip the width of my plenum box and I curved that. I curved it. Mm -hmm. So instead of hitting at the end of the box, it's inside, there's a curve and it curves right out. So there's less resistance. Man, it really sucks out this, this stuff. And it's just duct tape and a cardboard box mm -hmm. that goes out a four inch dryer vent, an old four inch dryer vent out of the side of the out of the side of the basement. What are you pushing the air with a box fan or something? Oh, one of them little squirrel cage fans. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's only it's only prob it's a little thing. It's probably with a rotary, inches, sixteen inches wide. A rotary blower. Yeah, a squirrel cage. Yeah, right. Okay. You know, just like a gerbil. Yeah. You know, gerbil hamster, ready? Yeah. Or as we call it, a wheeled fan. Yeah. Uh -huh. You either got blades or you got a wheel. What also works really good is some carpet blower, you know, carpet fans or floor yeah. fans. Yeah. That's what this thing could be a floor fan, you know. You can turn it like two or three different directions, blowing straight up, straight out, or or just skimming right off the floor. Yeah, yeah the other thing you can do with them type two is like like the floor fans, just build a little thing and just stick them in your window and then close the window down on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you really got, basically, that's how a paint booth works, mm -hmm. that the fan is, you know, right at, at where it's going out. And when I'm sanding and want to filter the uh, primer dust or whatever I'm sanding, I just use one of those plastic, uh, I guess, milk crates <laughs> and put a, it's the same size as an air conditioner filter. And so put the box fan on top of the crate and put the filter on top of the fan and the fan 
sucks it all together and it picks up most of it and blows the rest onto the floor. But that air conditioner filter. You see it going through the window? Yeah. 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 Right there on top is a, is a bunch of masking that I reuse all the time. Hey, does anyone want to buy a brand new sunbed? Suntan bed? No, yeah. thanks. <laughs> 500 bucks you can have it all day i got the sun for free it works yeah. really good too but hey tom go over there and check your water here see if your paint's dry <laughs> <laughs> yep it's ready that's ready <clears throat> yeah I think let's that. see it i keep giving tom crap he ain't talking to me anymore one of these days i love it We're gonna need a couple tools here. Grab so any guys, do any of you guys like uh, Jeff Foxworthy? Yeah. Yeah. Day, yeah. I hadn't seen much of him in a long time. Well, Tom Dixon sent me this, and it's uh, kind of that's what that's what uh, Tom reminded me. But the um, water here, and I said, you know, he must be a redneck. Well, he sent me this thing where it's kind of a play of words on that you must be a redneck, but instead of being a redneck. You must be a stunt flyer. Yeah. And if you like, I can read it to you. It's pretty funny. Yep, sounds good. Yeah, let's hear it. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. If when you're in a motel, the first thing you do when you get up is look and see how the wind is blowing, and you're in town for your daughter's wedding, you <laughs> must be a stunt flyer. Be a stunt flyer. <laughs> yeah. When driving into Walmart's parking lot, you check out the distance between the light poles. <laughs> Just in case they close, you might be a stunt flyer. Yeah, no kidding. You're having sex with your girlfriend, and you wonder why you can pull out in time, <laughs> and you're thinking about the reverse wing over, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> when bucking the paint good. on your new plane, you become sexually aroused, you might be a stunt flyer. Yeah, you might. <laughs> you might. If you if you wonder how your lawnmower would work on a pipe or fifteen percent <laughs> nitro, you might be a stunt flyer. If your doctor tells you to lose four to six pounds, and you think I'm not throwing away that wood away, <laughs> you might be a stunt flyer. If you think a nobler cause is a reason to build another nobler, you might be a stunt flyer. If you know all the names of all the Greek and Roman gods named I beam models, but not the president, <laughs> vice president, or state senators, you might be a stunt flyer. If you ever used an old profile model as a leaf blower, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> If you ever taken a plane to a new car dealership to be sure it would fit in your trunk, I did that. You might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> I've definitely done that. that. Uh, if you've ever been pictured, excuse me, if you've ever pictured a pattern in the shower, you might be a stunt flyer. If you see someone walking their dog on a long leash and your urge is to tell them to loop it, <laughs> if you have four or more types of uh, what, what, Rusty? I do fly myself to sleep some nights. Oh, so do I. I do my pattern with my finger laying on my back. Absolutely. Now, if you have four or more types of polishing products in your garage and none are for your car, you might be a stunt flyer. If you Wonder if your SUV has a Uniflow gas tank, you might be a stunt flyer. If you keep having the nagging feeling that the gas tank is an eighth of an inch too high, you might be a stunt flyer. If you look at your new white Cadillac and think the only thing missing is ink lines, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> If you ask for two beds in a motel and you're the only person in the room, you might be a stunt flyer. 
if you use your starter battery as a nightlight, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> if you dress better during your Nats flights than you do for church, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> if you never miss a Nats or a VSC, but don't go to church at all, you must be a stunt flyer. If you ever use a gallon of fuel as a stooge, you might be a stunt flyer. If you ever suddenly realize that you've been using fuel out of the can all day, you might be a stunt flyer. If you hear your neighbor's weed eater and you think it needs another head shim, you might be a stunt flyer. <laughs> if you see a beautiful woman carrying her husband or a boyfriend's plane and you think, I wonder what engine it has, you might be a stunt flyer. If someone says he has a lot of balls and your association is to control system hardware, you might be a stunt flyer. That was the last one. That's Very good. good. What a fun. You know, the big thing is wind. I can be working and go up on a roof or whatever. And the first thing I'm like, damn, this wind would be good for flying and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I can't yeah. go flying. I'm working, but that's the first thing that pops into my head. Yeah. Y'all's homework assignment for Friday night is to make a new one up. <laughs> Just one, but everybody can make a new one up. Yeah, you always can think of something. Mm. When I drive around town, I'm always looking at places that would be perfect to fly. There you go. How are you going? It, you know, it's really easy. Is I, if you if you test your spray pattern on your old water heater, <laughs> there you go. That's the best one. Yeah, you may be a stunt flyer. <laughs> Yeah, or if you think a golf course is a waste of grass, you might be a stunt flyer. Yeah, yeah. here, here. Or a soccer field. Yes. Uh. I'm like, why? In, I, think, I think that all the time. Why in the hell can we have 40 damn soccer fields and not a control line field? We don't have no room for control line fields. But you drive yep. by these schools and, and these small towns, they got all these soccer fields. And they mow them and everything. And I'm like, damn, I'd even, if you'd give me a place to have a field, I'll mow it. You don't even have to spend the money on that. Yeah. But you got the city mowing them and putting the, the lines down and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, man, we yep. can't, even get a, can't even get a flying field. But. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, whenever I go into a new store, it doesn't matter what it is, I want to see if they have anything I can use for my stunt planes. Yeah. yeah. Do that. I check out all the glues, all the aluminium bits and pieces, anything that might be of use for part of a construction. I check out all the plastic ladles or wooden ladles and things. You sort of yeah. think of anything that might be useful. Yeah, you might be a stunt flyer if you do that. <laughs> oh, sport flyers are actually worse about looking for things they can convert into an airplane part yeah i was always doing trying to figure out how to convert a damn tile saw into a little um bench circular you know or, uh, yeah. and never could do it but i ended up getting a dremel so i got i love dremel well i was there at brodak and that guy sold me a you know he says i think it's brand new you know and uh, the box is just all beat to crap. I'm like, what do you want for it, you know? He's like, 50 bucks. I'm like, all right, I wanted one. When I got home, the thing had never been used. Wow. And it came with like three extra blades. And if I see him this year at Brodak, I'm going to say, hey, why couldn't you throw in a damn carbon or a carbide tip blade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But it had all the different. Whoever bought it bought all the different uh, tooth pattern or the sure. number of teeth from that Brodak made at the time. I mean, bro, that Dremel made. Yeah, all still great the, little saw, man. It's all they're all still in the wrappers and everything. 
I love my new Dremel I got for Christmas. I've finally had a chance to use it, and it's so much smoother than my 50-year-old old-fashioned Dremel. And so now I got two Dremels, uh, and I can have one with a different attachment on it, you know, a cutoff wheel or a grinding wheel or something, and it saves me some time, too. But it's so smooth. That's I'm a lot. So I'm so cheap. The one I bought was a true value rotary tool because it was so much cheaper than Dremel and it looked like a Dremel. And then when the brushes went bad, I got on uh, eBay and found brushes for it and got the thing going again for like $6. My old Dremel surges a lot. And I thought maybe the brushes were going bad. Yep. So I took them out and looked at them the other day, but they look fine. Now, I don't know if when they get down to a certain length, they quit making hard enough contact. And these were about um, three eighths of an inch tall on top of the spring. Does that sound like they might be worn out? Well, what I found on mine was, is that I bought the new, uh, the new brushes and my brushes were worn bad and it still kind of did that. So I took it apart and I sanded, I guess the armature, the, the copper. Yeah, the on, commentator, you got to clean the commentator. Yeah, it, it was so pitted and blacked with, with That's it. carbon and stuff like that or dust burn on it or whatever it was. You can use brake cleaner on it. Take all that carbon and stuff oh, off okay. or a scotch Bright pad and then it'll run smooth. I just took some 1500 wet dry paper, stuck it in work. my hand, worked it back and forth, put it back together and the thing runs like brand new. Okay. Yeah. I, my other guess was the bearings were getting uh, bad and heating up, but uh, I'll do that. I'll crack it open and clean yeah, the commentator. But, but yeah, I looked down in there because I just did with a little flashlight. I'm like, man, that's all black down in there. What's going on? You know, cause I thought the brushes were sticking in the holder and yeah, it was, it was just that once I cleaned it up, that thing's like, it ran like 40 years ago when I first bought it. Mm -hmm. that, maybe I didn't need a new one as bad as I thought I did, but I sure do like all of the, uh, it's uh, nice having two. Yeah. And yeah, it, it is nice having yeah. two. Now yeah, we can I, have one for a cutoff wheel and the other yeah. one for a sander yeah. or something. I bought a cordless and I thought that was the way to go, but that battery lasted only about a year. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. weighed them both and decided I'm always going to be using it inside the shop. I got plenty of places to plug it in. So, yeah, I, I got the, I got the 120 volt one. So I got this one sitting right here. This was my oldest one. Oh, with I got that Robart 90 yeah, with the little pointed things you can, especially for working in these boats, you can drill through the bulkheads real easy. Are you still you know, running nitro boats or are you running electric? Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm running all gas, but I did build an electric tugboat. And then I got the flex one hanging here, if you can see that. Yeah. It's a little sanding disc. <laughs> yeah, I'd be lost without Dremels, man. That was like... Uh... But that saw you scored, that's a score because they took them off the market because people got injured. Uh, yeah, you know, that was the reason just why. just need to use some common sense. It's a, it, it, it's a circular saw. It's a table saw. Right. Yeah, you build a sled for that, uh, Steve. That would be just like so awesome of a tool. Yep. You build a fence. and Yeah. You well, yeah, you come with a fence. Plywood and, and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, you got it. I've got the same saw. It's a beauty. Yeah, I, I still want one of those saws. Actually, I I don't, I, uh, I was really fixated on it for a while, and I just kind of went to other things. But I still like to have them because it's so small and compact. But well, well, Micromart has here, a version. But, yeah, huh? they're expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. You know, I What's want that, yeah, like German one hundred dollars yeah. or whatever. It's like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. But the, the, you want the bigger one. The smaller Micro Mart doesn't have a lot of powers. doesn't have the power that this Dremel does. Yeah, but the guess, Dremel's the beast. The, the next one up at Micro Mart, they got one that has a tiltable arbor in it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that has a lot more. And they said that thing has good power like the Dremel does. When my father-in-law died, I inherited a brand-new unused Roto Zip, And I played with it a few times. And then the... Uh, little disc fan started sliding up and down on the shaft and grinding itself to pieces and no kind of glue or anything I tried would hold it in place. So I just shit canned it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 30 years ago at uh, uh, Toledo, 
a guy was on a plexiglass. He made a deal that would bolt down to a uh, Dremel um, <clears throat> get the little the scroll like, saw. Yeah, the scroll saw. Mm -hmm. And he had a fence and everything built in so you could use it like that. You could put a piece of wood in it and go down the fence and, and the scroll uh, saw would cut it. I've been wanting something with a rip fence for so long and I've tried making it out of an old uh, bandsaw plate with a jigsaw bolted underneath it, but I've never gotten anything that works really well. Well, you know, and I made up a fence and stuff for my uh, my bandsaw, but I see at Harbor Freight, they got a small bandsaw now with a rip fence and everything Yep, that build in, and I mean, you can, ad you can adjust a bandsaw down, you know, if you don't, you know, the top uh, bearing, and you can actually cut things on a bandsaw pretty damn good with a rip fence on there. Hey, good, Tom. Uh, Looking beautiful. Good. That's not a, that pavement black, that's why I, I picked it. It's not, a, it's not a, a, a deep black. It's, it's charcoal colored in. Yeah, charcoal, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now see. Now, now uh, the only thing that's left on this side is the uh, the devil tail going down the boom, and the uh, the devil fork going up the rudder. You want to put the fork tail on the rudder, don't you? Yeah, I right, like that. right here. Now the tail is going to start on this tip. And go in a circle and then go straight up with the forks on there. Yeah, like he's the coiled up. And uh, the red uh, tail down this boom, just this sh in the short piece. And then the uh, the sexy girl devil on the nose. So what's the bottom? They look the same, the bottom? Okay, nope, the bottom's going to be totally different. Oh, it's the light blue. Yep. Now, nice. right... <laughs> I'm going to make a, uh, I'm thinking that right here will be the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the U S army air force insignia. Oh, okay. With the star, this side's going to be military. Oh, okay. And, uh, on the wing in the back here, I will have panel lines with my ink pens. And then I'm just going to throw the engine in and wheels, you know, uh, uh, clear coat it and be done with it. Yeah. Getting close now. Yeah. The one thing I noticed that I didn't notice until I got paint on it. Uh, the guy who built this plane, I don't think he took his ribs. I don't think because I've got a couple ribs that are standing a little bit higher than all the other ribs. Oh, he didn't sand them in. Right. But see, this is a, uh, it's a tapered wing, a swept back wing, plus it's tapered to the tips. Yeah. So when you build one of them, you, you know, you kind of got to, you, you kind of got to uh, go, you, you know, you, you got to gauge it, stick a block on it of some sort, and you can see where it's tilting too, you know, teetering too much on the high rib. Yeah. You know, you need to stand that down. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, there's a high rib. Yeah, I can, I can see the first rib out right, right there. Right there. Look at that. Look yeah, how you high can that see it. Is. Yeah. yeah, it's way too high. Yeah, look at this one right here. The same. This one's too high. And this one, hell, up here, it's almost too low. But. Oh, well. My Stuka don't look like that. You got a, you got a good deal on it. And if When it's, it's flying, flying it's around the circle, you'll never notice it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, sixty feet away. Yeah, you won't notice it. Yeah. So anyway, I took a gamble on the uh, on the red and the. Uh, when you get it in the light, right, you can really see the red. Yeah. yeah. Now you can. Yeah, because it was looking kind of brown. Yeah, it looks blood red now. It is actually blood red because I got some on my hands. And and uh, uh, yesterday, 
I was up upstairs to get me something to drink. My wife goes, hey, did you cut your hand? Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Yeah. No, but it looks like real blood. Yeah, that's what you told me in that text you sent me yesterday. Yep. It's looking yeah. good. Yeah, one thing about it is, is if you really like the plane and stuff like that, you can always build another one and have all the ribs the right height. And oh, yeah, man. I'd put all the goodies in it. You know, I'd, I'd put me a weight box in it. Yeah. I uh, it would uh I would put a hatch in it and make and make my uh make my controls adjustable. You know, I can't adjust my controls except for bending shit. No, that's the prototype. You can yeah. first of the series. Yeah. yeah. I don't even have a set of plans. What'd you pay for that? Nothing. It was given to me. Oh, there you go. That's price. So, that's the price. price. So so a rib is high or whatever. Yeah, and the guy said, hey, you, you know, I give this to you, just get her flying. Who knows? Might be a real good flying plane. It by yeah, next it's week looking tomorrow. good, man. Get it up. What do you tell you, Tom? <clears throat> I'll give this to you, but you got to get it flying by next week. Is that what, how it was? Oh, no. He gave it to me <laughs> last year. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I tell you what, I've been sanding and sanding and sanding. <laughs> You're on a mission here lately. Yeah. Well, this is my, this is it. This is, this is done for the year of building. And well, and hey, we, we started talking about doing winter builds way back and um, never really, it was my fault that we didn't really follow through on it. And everybody did work on stuff, but, but we never did it in the organized format like I wanted to. And part of, part of that was me falling out of the game too and I, I just didn't have my head in the thing all winter long you, you kind of went through a little bit of tough time there to where yeah 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 your landing gear got broke so we had to take care of that first <laughs> right i got the flight street type landing gear one wheel <laughs> yeah uh, you know i mean all good maybe we just get you a pair of roller skates that way you yeah, like, um, it comes and goes, but I'm I'm uh, improving by leaps and bounds. So uh, I walk around most of the day with no cane anymore. That's Very good. good. Until I get sore, and uh, that was that's the thing. If I went out to the workshop, I'd get sore, and it would be at two days before I could go without cane again. So, you know, um, but uh, yeah, I'm encouraged. I think uh, all will be pretty well. Well, that's, yeah, with, you know, I don't have, my hips bother me, but it's not that bad. We're here in Mount Pleasant, and they had that that shooting, and I was at a factory, and they, they locked us all down and all that kind of stuff, but they had signs up there, you know, if a shooter comes in or whatever, run. And I told the guy there, I said, you got a really fast hub around? And he's like, what? I said, I'm too old to run. You're going to have to give me a cart that I can... Jet away on because they'll catch me easy. That's why you just need to pack. <laughs> I'm with you, Tom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is a robbery. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Here's your, here's your sign. See you later. Call the corner. Yeah, you don't need, I prefer the way to handle it, too. Yeah, just call a corner. Just, that's all you need. Well, yeah, that was a sad deal. Hmm. When Hell, they couldn't find the kid for, I don't know. An hour. Hours. An hour. No, 12 hours they couldn't find him. What, that, uh, what, the kid that shot down his in parents. Florida? No, the kid that shot his parents from Illinois there in, in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. They came to pick him up for spring break, and he got in trouble the night before and stuff like that, and his parents came to pick him up, and his parents were a police officer. He went in his dad's car and got his dad's gun out of the car and came back into his apartment and shot him, his mom and dad and killed him. Oh, oh. Yeah, I remember seeing it on the national news now. Yeah, then he, he ran. He just ran out of where he was at over by the railroad tracks and river and the helicopters were, you know, that happened at 8 in the morning. And when I left at 5 o'clock, the helicopters were still flying and looking for him. And finally he got cold and shit like that and and walked up by the train coming by, and they seen him, and they just picked him up. He was hungry and cold. 
Well, they had dogs out there and everything and couldn't find him. And he was right where they were looking the whole day. Hmm. Uh, must here in Columbia, there was a meeting, and I think it's one of those meetings that you go to for driving after you get a DUI first offense or something like that. And some guy kicks the door in, points a gun at everybody and starts collecting wallets and guns. Well, this dude had a wallet, a gun that was disguised as a wallet. So he whipped his wallet out and shot that dude to death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. I don't know if it was a single shot or what, but he made it, he made it count. My luck though, I'd have, I'd sit down and the damn thing would go off and shoot yeah. me in the shoot ass. Cut off. Shoot your prostate off. Maybe that is yeah. so long forever. <laughs> shoot some stuff off I wanted to keep. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's about time to wrap it up for tonight, Monday night, and it's 12 19. So, uh, y'all don't forget to make up your, uh, you might be a stunt flyer <laughs> joke for Friday yeah. night. I'm like, I'll pull you, every one of you. I'll make one up too. So, I'm not. So this even. one was uh, what about the water heater? When you test your your spray pattern on your old water heater, yeah, no, yeah. If you, you might be tonight. a stunt flyer. <laughs> if you used it tonight, you can't use it again on Friday night. I'm gonna make up a new one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, later. guys. We'll see you later. Y'all right. take it easy. Yeah. I, the, you guys that are watching, we got no viewers i was going to ask them if you're not able to use youtube please pm me and tell me why yeah uh, you can't get in so anyway until friday uh tight lines fair winds i think you're supposed to say that the other way around but anyway see you good night good night everybody i'm staying on <laughs> i'll hang out with you too Y'all have fun. We'll see you Friday. Good night. Night.